by Unical 76 Protect Dealers. Guaranteed auto service. That's the spirit of 76. By Farmer John, the only packer of our strictly fresh Eastern cornbread pork and many other fine meat products. Farmer John. And by Canon, the official camera of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Jerry Doggett. Welcome to the final telecast and the final game of the year, the Dodgers and the Padres. Jerry, the Dodgers avoided one stigma. They're not going to be last, and they were able to knock San Diego over the head and beat them 10 out of 17. And they're going to finish ahead of the Atlanta Braves, give them a fourth-place finish, which is not too bad, considering two weeks ago they were looking in the cellar door. When they start Sean Hilligus today, it does give them somewhat of an optimistic outlook in looking to 1988 with Hilligus and Belcher at all. I think that uh, Tommy and, of course, uh, Fred and Peter are all really encouraged about the performance of the young players, especially Hilligus and Belcher and Tim Cruz and the reemergence of Alejandro Pena. When you look back over the year of 1987, where would your most uh, disappointing points be? I think when they were in the... About in the middle of the season, they hit that long losing streak. I thought for a while there they had a chance to finish better, maybe even pass Houston, finish third, and uh, put a little heat on the other clubs, but that long losing streak just kind of killed them. There was a time, in all honesty and as candid as we can get, there was a time, I think, when we thought that the Dodgers might finish last. Yeah, the, the, they were tied momentarily with San Diego. That was about uh, three or four weeks ago, and then San Diego went into the tailspin, and the Dodgers started to win, and they have played very well the last several weeks. I think, too, some of the additions, not only of the newcomers, but people like Glenn Hoffman have given the ball club a lift, at least for the final two and a half, three months of the season. He really stabilized the middle of the infield. He really did. Well, we'll get to the starting lineups. We'll have all the pregame stats and stories all coming up right after this. Fours came in lots of shapes and sizes this year, but only one was named best 4x4 of the year. Nissan Pathfinder, honored by both four-wheel and off-road and four-wheeler magazines. Best of the year in on- and off-road performance. Best of the year for interior comfort and function. Award-winning ride, toughness, and style found in Pathfinder and every 4x4 we make. Special incentives to dealers from Nissan could help you save big at your Nissan dealer now, but hurry, time's limited. They call for it on the Marienplatz in Munich. They call for it in the Canadian Rockies. And they call for it in Newport Beach, California. Low and brown, brewed around the world. Taste it and you'll know why. Rich Bavarian hops and supervision brew fresh and smooth in America. It's the best way in the world to brew beer. This world calls for low and brown right now. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated who also employ the announcers. It's intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, description, or other use of the game without the express written permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated is prohibited. The visiting Dodgers coming to San Diego to round it out. They've won 10 of the previous 17. And here's Jerry to give you the Dodger lineup. Okay, Vinny, leading off for the Dodgers will be Steve Sachs at second base, hitting 277, winding up another good year, but not quite as good as last year. Then rookie Mike Sharperson will be at third base, and this youngster has looked pretty good both at second and at third. Pedro Guerrero will be at first base, and Guerrero hitting 338 with an outstanding season and possibly the comeback player of the year. Ralph Bryant will start today and play right field. Mike Marshall sits it out at least at the start, but Tommy might get a lot of guys in there. Jose Gonzalez will be in center field, and in left field will be Danny Heap, who's been the pinch hitter most of the season. And Glenn Hoffman plays shortstop, and we'll have Orlando Mercado doing the catching, Sosa sitting it out, 
and rookie right enter Sean Hillegas with a three and three record. Okay, Ben. Well, here's the way the San Diego Padres go, and the Dodgers have knocked them around a little bit. It'll be the league's leading hitter in right field, Tony Gwynn, then young Stan Jefferson in center field, John Cruck at first base, with Camilo Martinez in left field, maybe the rookie of the year, Benito Santiago behind the plate, Randy Reddy at third base, Louis Salazar at short. Joey Cora, who began the year and is finishing the year with the Padres at second base, and Ed Whitson on the mound. Whitson has posted fairly good numbers this year, Jerry, but it seems like he's always a victim of the long ball. Early in the year, the first time the Dodgers saw him this year, they scored five runs against Whitson, and three or four of those were home runs. They bombed him out pretty fast, but after that, he settled down a while. Uh, the home run total is something that I don't know where it came from, but he gave up a total of 35 home runs on the year and that's a that's a ton when you when you're giving up 35 home runs you're in Burt Blylevin territory although the pitcher of the year as far as home runs given up according to innings would be young Ken Dixon with Baltimore Baltimore has given up an incredible number of home runs and he is absolutely breathtaking as far as his ability to give up the home run chasing Blylevin again huh? and how for the Dodgers now Steve Sachs Mike Sharperson and then Pedro Guerrero Sachs did not have that 300 year and you can compare you can see he fell off in just about every area although to be honest last year might have been a fluke we say fluke I don't think in his wildest imaginations or dreams that Sachs figured he was going to be a lifetime 330 hitter Steve Sachs would probably say I'll settle for a 290 lifetime average and Phil Garner meanwhile with his baseball pants pushed up to air out his knees a little. He's on his way to the beach. I think so. Oh, and two to count as sacks. Reminds us in the old days, the Hollywood Stars, when they were then a Dodger farm club, and they were managed by Fred Haney, and they played a full year in shorts. Ball one. It's hot here. Is it getting any hotter than this during uh, the years in Texas? More, more humid. Uh, of course, in Texas, we very seldom ever played a day game in the summertime. You played uh, night games in June, July, and August, and they're still doing it in, in Dallas. A drive into the left field corner carrying and gone a home run for Steve Sachs. That is his sixth home run of the year His 45th run batted in and certainly Ed Whitson lived up to our advanced publicity about him a home run by the leadoff man number 36 against Ed. Isn't that something they go nine innings last night leaving runners at second and third in the first inning with nobody out scramble for nine and get nothing and the leadoff man first man up puts him on the scoreboard and ten runs on Friday night <laughs> so Sachs hits a home run the Dodgers lead one to nothing and Mike Sharperson coming up the Unical Corporation presenting a fifty dollar book of Unical 76 auto script to the Optimist Boys home in Los Angeles oh and one account to Mike Sharperson who has done pretty well in limited time. He looks good at both third base and second base. He's a big rangy kid and he looks like he's got a pretty good arm. One and one to count. Where they have been playing him most of the time, I guess their thoughts are that he would be a candidate for third base next year. The home run by Sachs, by the way, is the 14th for the Dodgers here. They've hit two against San Diego in uh, Los Angeles. Boy, 16 and all. You know, when there. you think about it, I guess this is slowly becoming a launching pad, especially when it's hot like this. So Sachs, who's getting a little sugar from his newborn baby daughter before the game, probably bangs a home run, and Sharperson comes back with a shot into right center for a base hit. So Mike Sharperson comes up with his ninth hit in 30 at bats. The reason we want to look that up, he's hitting 300. Nice way for the kid to finish up the year. Pedro Guerrero coming up. And look at the difference in his numbers. But of course, last year he was hardly able. And this year he's been leading the way. This year, Guerrero having an all star year. And appeared in all but one game. So he only missed 10 games all year. Ball one. Talking about home runs here, the Padres have. 155 home runs in this ballpark in Dodger Stadium 108 that gives you a little oh. idea oh. one ball and no strikes fouled away down the right field line out of play and the count one and one last year when we were comparing the numbers 
particularly for Guerrero. You should point out the difference in games played this year. One hundred and fifty two games played last year. Thirty one. Dodgers leading one to nothing on a home run by Sachs. Sharperson with a base hit at first and Guerrero hits it off Whitson's glove with English on it. It gets by Cora into shallow center and the Dodgers are going to have runners at second and third. That was a fluke play. If Whitson doesn't touch it or if he catches it, it's a double play. But Eddie just put some English on it and deflected it behind Cora, who was going to fill up the middle. Rather be lucky than good. <laughs> Boy, isn't that something? On the last day of the year, too. <laughs> wow. Well, we had enough double plays here in this series. They have that many that uh, you can well, throw one back, huh? It, it seemed like we did. <laughs> It'll be a base hit. Not much they can do about it. So runners at second and third, and Ralph Bryant at the plate. Be a pretty good idea to match them as we're doing. Now you can see that Bryant did not hit the long ball this year. Of course, he didn't play in that many games, but he made appearances in 45 games. That's off the glove of Cruck, who will feed Whitson just in time. Sharperson scores. Guerrero takes third, and the Dodgers lead two to nothing. And he's unlucky. He could have had a base hit on that one. That's right. That could have been an extra base hit down the line. Cruck is not a polished first baseman, to say the least, but he'll probably spend most of his career there. That's probably a better spot for him than left field. Mm -hmm. When you look at John Cruck and Pedro Guerrero playing first base, you don't figure you're going to see a gold glove at that position as far as these two clubs are concerned. Not yet. Not yet. Two to nothing in favor of the Dodgers and Jose Gonzalez coming up. Gonzalez called up late at the end of the year and struggling. Here's a kid. They had him when he was 16 years old. You would think that by this time seven years is a long time but that's probably the most important ingredient of all. You have to have patience. He has not even reached full maturity no. yet. He's still growing a little bit and he's uh, gaining speed. He's got a chance to be a pretty good player. He's still very much the boy trying to get Guerrero home from third. Two and all the count. They're in the fourth inning at Detroit. The Tigers leading Toronto one nothing. That's Frank Tanana and Jimmy Key and the difference a home run by Larry Herndon in the second inning. And that's a drive into left center field racing over as Martinez and makes the catch Guerrero tags and scores and the Dodgers now lead three to nothing. So it shows you how important the ball Guerrero hit for the whole inning mm -hmm. turned it completely around and then also he's able to take third on the next play by Bryant. I like to say you got to have things fall your way in the first game of the series the Dodgers had a two run first inning and then went on to roll to a ten to three. Laffer and they're trying to turn this one into that today. Last night must have been particularly frustrating. Second and third, nobody out, and Guerrero and Marshall coming up. In the very first inning. Yeah. Looked like they're going to get two or three runs right away against a pretty good pitcher, Jones. Hershiser might have pitched his best game of the year last night. And lose. Mm -hmm. Danny He playing left field today. One ball and one strike to count to Danny. For Danny Heap, it was really an impossible year because he just waited too long. Yeah and he after he did sign he went to San Antonio and he was you know trying to get started there but to, to miss all of spring training and then two months of the season you just can't do it. No way and then to come up to the big leagues the last week in June and expect anything from him is uh, is really wishful thinking more than anything else. So he has bad numbers but there's certainly a lot of reasons for it. And he'll get another chance next year. Oh you can bet he's a pretty good player. We have two out in the first inning the Dodgers have three. And they're leading the Padres three to nothing. Fouled away. Ed Whitson, remember when he was pitching for the Yankees and came out of the ballpark one day in the Bronx and was attacked and chased by a bunch of guys, jumped in his pickup truck and just did get out of there. And the next day he said, Hey, I want to get out of here. Well, that's awful, isn't it? Well, that's <laughs> you talk about booing. Go ahead and boo, but leave my car alone. Yeah, and they were really going after him. He uh, he admitted. He said it was frightening. There were three adults. They were not little kids, and they were all set to beat him up because he had a bad day. He had a big contract in the Yankees, didn't he? Yeah, and how, and how. 
Two and two to Danny Heap. Glenn Hoffman on deck. Dodgers lead three nothing on the last game of the year. Ball three. Larry Boa has survived, and I guess that's the most important thing, survived his first year as the manager of the San Diego Padres. You know, Larry Boy is a, kind of a really a, a scrap iron kind of a guy. I think he and maybe Bobby Valentine are the people who would be similar at their managerial approaches. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And he had to learn to lose, and it's very hard. He was a proud player, a very successful player, and he found it very, very difficult in the beginning. There's a drive down the right field line, foul and out of play. In fact, I know Tommy Lasorda talked to Boa and said to him, hey, you just can't go crazy when you lose. There's no way. You can't. You'll never survive. And then finally, when he got the vote of confidence and the contract renewed for 88, well, then he seemed to calm down. If Tommy had talked to him seven or eight years ago, <laughs> yeah. he wouldn't have been able to say that. Put it. No, no way. Fly ball, and Stanley Jefferson is there to put it away. So the Dodgers, three run, three hits. And on this special day, all eyes on the camera. Look at that. Jerome Doggett. What year? <laughs> that's, oh, that's about 1951. Oh, yeah. Just around the corner. We'll be back. protection always coming through when friends are counting on you you go all out you go old spice new wide old spice fast track is clinically proven to block odor better than the leading men's deodorant that's all out protection you go all out you go old spice all out protection Here's a must for your sports library, a 72-minute Dodger video cassette, 25 years of Dodger Stadium. Great moments in Dodger Stadium history from Colfax and Drysdale to Valenzuela and Guerrero. Send 2345, including postage and handling, to Dodger 25th Anniversary Dodger Stadium, Los Angeles 90012. Advise if you want VHS or beta, and please allow four to six weeks for delivery. Admittedly, a very disappointing year for the Dodgers. If they win today, the Dodgers will have equaled their win total of last year, 73. But along the way, there were some bright spots to help us through some dark moments. For instance, Pedro Guerrero coming back to become the second hitter in the National League, a solid 338, missing only 10 games. And what about the contributions of John Shelby, a career high of 21 home runs? Shelby playing almost every day, had 69 RBIs, overall average 278. Uh, he made many, many contributions, and we're looking forward to seeing Shelby have a big 88. All right, the Dodgers have three, and now we'll see what Sean Hillegas can do against Tony Gwynn, Stanley Jefferson, and John Crutt. Tony Gwynn, the number one hitter in the league, and there's no doubt about it. Well, he's something else, isn't he? Won the championship a couple of years ago, comes right back down, has a chance to be the first hitter with a 370 mark since Stan Musial. What he back. does is maybe give up a little power. As you can see, he has hit half the home runs he had last year, but hitting 370. Hmm. Two balls, no strikes. I guess when you talk about great hitters, you have Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, and Don Mattingly. And then after that, you have a lot of good hitters. Mm -hmm. Tony could have set the game out because he was hurt his hand. His hand's been bothering him oh, for a month. Got that bad finger. But he's at 370, and he's just going to stay in and hope that he hits 370 by getting a hit or two. And you know he, he's only missed five games all year, Tony Gwynn? Yep. Five games. Boy. He's an Iron Man. Mm. I remember Deacon Jones, before he left the Padres, Deacon said that one of the nice things about Tony Gwynn, he was the hardest working player on the team. So for him to hit 370 is no fluke. By the way, you missed it last night. Deacon Jones was here and he sang the national anthem for us. Oh, he did. Great. Really. Yeah, great. Great guy. 
those are the hitters we were talking about. Didn't mention Mattingly. Mattingly becomes an all-time hitter just for his grand slam. Can you imagine Don Mattingly hit six grand slam home runs this year That's by himself? Ernie, Ernie Banks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sean Hilligas, who pitched very well his last time out, as Gwynn at first, and the batter is Tony Jefferson. And Stan Jefferson, the center fielder, with John Cruck on deck. Gwynn off the bag. Here's a note on Hilligas. He has been selected to the Triple A All Star team by Baseball America, so that means he's the. One of the top pitchers in all of Triple A, mm. several leagues, not just the Coast League. And the Dodgers feel that he has matured and has grown, and I think they're looking at him with a staff that's already solid. When you talk about Hershiser, Fernando, and Welsh, then you talk about Belcher and Hilligas. Suddenly, the rebirth of Alejandro Pena in the bullpen. Do you think if they go to the trade market that they, some clubs might be asking for these fellows now? I don't know if they'd want the young kids, but they could. Certainly a Belcher, because Belcher has been known as a kid with a great arm. There's one, and Deep there's two. Land. Though an easy double play, 4-6-3, as Sachs got that ball to Hoffman in a hurry. And you have two down, and John Cruck coming up. Belcher's kind of like a, a horse coming from a minor league horse race track to Hollywood Park or Santa Anita you look at the racing form and he can't run a lick he gives up all these base on balls comes to the big leagues and he doesn't walk anybody that's uh, you can throw the form out the window for Belcher well here's another hitter we'll compare and look at the difference in power and RBIs a definite sign of maturity and he didn't give up any points the so John Cruck an outstanding hitter but look at the difference in home runs and RBIs he has come of age. Remember that story about him? He's from such a little town in West Virginia when he signed a contract and went out to play in the San Diego minor league system. He said it was the first time he went to a city where he didn't know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Two and oh to John Cruck. That's, that's going for, to a big one, isn't it? Hell to hell. Sean Patrick Hilligus trying to win his fourth. And that's in there for a strike. Three and one to count. Eric Gregg is the plate umpire with Davis, Harvey, and Stello working the line. I guess the town he grew up in was so small they didn't know how to pronounce his name. They've now sent word around to all the baseball people that it's Crook instead of Crook. <laughs> we're right. going to keep calling him Crook, uh, Crook the rest of this year. Okay. <laughs> Next we'll, year we'll start over. We'll switch it. <laughs> the batter now is Carmelo Martinez, the left fielder with John Crook at first. Two down in the first inning. And the Dodgers leading the Padres 3-0. And we'll look at Carmelo's numbers. A better year. Last year he was bothered by a bad back and bad legs. He attributed it to jogging. And this year he's been more careful and it's been more profitable. He was the kind of a kid I would think who would always have a weight problem unless he really worked at it. They call him the baby bull and he's big. Yeah. And last year and the year before of course he was playing caddy to Steve Garvey. And now it looks like he's either going to have to play first base or left field, and uh, Crux playing first, so he's going to find a position. Round ball to Hoffman, over to Sachs, and that's that. No runs, no hits, a man left. And as we take another look at the Doggett Gallery, <laughs> well, look at that. Holy mackerel, that's about 1958 at KFI when we first came to Los Angeles. Mm. Those good old days. There was a time it was easy to find a really good mechanic. Those happy days. A guy that you could trust with your car. Those golden days of service with a smile. These days, well, it's not easy unless you look here. Unical 76. You see, only a 76 ProTech technician is trained, retrained, tested, and retested every two years. So there's still one guy you can trust, just like the good old days. You'll find it at 76. <laughs> the spirit of 76. Shopping for meats that make the meal, here's another tasty idea from Farmer John. Toast spread with your favorite dressing, a crunchy leaf of garden fresh lettuce, add a juicy red ripe tomato slice, and invite Farmer John to come on in. Farmer John bacon, bacon that's smoked with real old time Western flavor. You can't miss with this unblteable idea. The easternmost in quality, westernmost in flavor. Bring home the bacon from Farmer John. When it comes to autofocus cameras, some give you part of the action, 
But Canon EOS gives you all of the action. When it's so dark that some can't focus, EOS doesn't miss a trick. And Canon EOS has computers and motors in every lens for fast focus. So great shots are easy and so creative, the competition is out of the picture. EOS, more than autofocus, easier than ever. Buy EOS today with no money down, low monthly payments at participating Canon dealers. Jerry, here's the high rent district as far as the offense is concerned in the National League. And look at that name, Andre Dawson. What a year. Well, he got the MVP playing yeah. on the last place club. That, that's what I wonder about. I mean, sure, he's most valuable, but most valuable for what? For the last? Yeah. You know, I, I think a guy like Will Clark ought to get a lot of consideration. Yeah. San Francisco Giants, because he's, got, he's had a great year. There's I'm a groundswell for Ozzie Smith, but there are a lot of players who say, no way you can give it to a guy that never hit a home run. Tony Gwynn is coming out of the game. It's a nice touch. They give the crowd a chance to say thank you, Tony, for a job well done. Sean Abner is now in right field. Benny, Tony Gwynn is the major league leader in batting, hits. His average is the highest in the National League since Stan Musial batted 376 back in 1948. Mm. Quite a hitter. Wonderful. Wonderful. Glenn Hoffman has just grounded out one down as Salazar took care of him. The Dodgers now hope that uh, young brother Chris can have as good a career as Tony. Boy if he can if he can hit 275 280 they'll be happy. Although in looking at Chris Quinn He's not going to get too many leg hits. He's no. going to have to have honest base hits. Orlando Mercado. And of course, as he stays here, he's got to think about opening day of 1987. Opening day of this year, Orlando Mercado was the catcher for the Detroit Tigers, right. who are a few innings away from going into the LCS in the American League. Now, how about that? How about the other guy? Sharperson was the starting second baseman for Toronto. Here they are, both with the Dodgers. Both with the Dodgers, both looking at the scoreboard to see that game between Detroit and Toronto. Or was it Case Sera Sera? And how. <laughs> Sean Hilligus facing Ed Whitson now with the Dodgers leading 3 nothing, top of the second inning. Dodgers on a home run by Sachs, couple of base hits, and a scoring fly ball and a ground ball, and they got their three in the first inning. Dodgers trying to wind up winning 11 of the 18. Last year, San Diego won 12 of the 18 from the Dodgers, so they have certainly righted their ship in that direction anyway. The Padres buried in last place. Padres only won 65 games. That's that's a long year. They were out of the cellar if they hadn't have had the long losing streak. They went uh, for nine straight here just at the end, mm -hmm. and they had a chance to catch Atlanta, and they were on a momentary tie with the Dodgers. One and two the count. Two balls and two strikes to Sean Hillegas. Dodgers three, Padres nothing in the second inning, the final game of the year. Three years ago, they were the champions. They ride the elevator. Well, you know, when you think about it, so were the Cubs, and they're both going to wind up in last place. At the end of an inning and a half, Dodgers three, Padres nothing, and our man of the day, look at here, with some little leaguers honoring Jerry a few years ago. Everyone knows the quality built into Japanese cars, but of all these manufacturers, only one was named number one, Nissan. Named in the J.D. Power 1987 New Car Survey as the number one Japanese manufacturer in quality. Fewer headaches, fewer problems. So when you buy the Nissan name, you know you're buying quality. The quality cars of Nissan. Nothing takes the place of driving the best. Special incentives to dealers from Nissan could help you save big at your Nissan dealer now, but hurry, time's limited. Hi, I'm Mike. She's busy. Wouldn't life be wonderful if you got three chances at everything? Uh, I'm just trying to win a little money here. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep trying. Okay. Introducing Triple Chance, the new lottery game that gives you three chances to win on every ticket. $25,000. I'm Debbie. I'm Arthur. I'm rich. <laughs> Triple Chance. If you've got the itch to be rich, scratch a little every day. 
Friends, you can now order a 1988 Dodger schedule to plan an outing to Dodger Stadium for your family or group. Groups of 30 or more will receive a free group promotional kit with tips on staging a successful night at Dodger Stadium. There'll be lots of exciting baseball action and great family entertainment throughout the 88 season. For group ticket information or for a 1988 Dodger schedule, write to Dodger Ticket Office, Dodger Stadium, LA 90012. Plan now to be part of it. A moment ago, we showed you the high-rent district in offense. Some of the hitters who've had a big year with the bat. Now the pitchers. The incredible Nolan Ryan. Steve Bedrosian running away with saves. And Rick Sutcliffe, a definite candidate for the Cy Young Award with 18 wins. But Ryan is the story. What a story it would be if he won the Cy Young Award with a losing record. I think Bedrosian's going to win it. Yeah, I, I would, I'd be inclined to go that way. But Ryan There's is the story. Oh, my gosh. 40, 40 years, years old. old is still firing BBs. Wow. Three to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. And it'll be Benito Santiago, who figures odds on to be rookie of the year. And there's a flare foul down the right field line. As he broke his bat, so he'll have to get another. I love that line in the paper today. It said, Benito Finito. <laughs> yes. End of his... End of his streak at 34. It was really a touching scene. The Padres won the game, and as soon as the last out was made, he walked toward the mound, and everyone on his team came by to congratulate him, give him a hug and a handshake. He only got three at bats in a ball game, and he was batting second in the lineup, and his team won uh, one to nothing. I think actually, when the Dodgers were staging a rally in the ninth inning, they had a couple men on. The fans were pulling for the Dodgers to get a run, or at least keep it going, so Benito could have another mm -hmm. turn of sure. bat. Sure. Of course, I can understand where Larry Bow is coming from when he said, I'm sorry it's over, but I'm relieved because I would hate to have him go into spring training still thinking about extending the streak <laughs> from last year. Wouldn't it have counted? Yeah, but it would have had an asterisk uh, saying over a two-year period. It would not have been a consecutive hitting streak to compare with Joe DiMaggio. Think you'll win Rookie of the Year? I do, hands down. Easy. Yep. Bet the house. Yeah. One ball and one strike to count to Benito, who promptly hits it down the left field line, in there, in the corner. Danny Heath playing it out of the bullpen. It's a double for Santiago. The one thing about last night, nothing came close. He struck out, grounded out, and hit a fly ball to the right. So it wasn't it a case of being robbed of a base or anything like that? How'd you like to have a dime for every fan saying, if he had only gotten a hit last <laughs> night, he'd have hit 30, right? Take a trip around the world. Yeah. Anyway, he started a new one with a double into left. And the batter now, as we see, Detroit trying to hold on to that one to nothing lead. Larry Herndon hit a home run in the second inning. That's Jimmy Key and Frank Tanana pitching for Detroit. What makes it really something, Frank Tanana, born and raised in Detroit, pitching the biggest game of the year for the Tigers. And had a pretty good career with the Angels. He did. He's a totally different pitcher. When he was with the Angels, he threw hard. Now he's a what they call a junk pitcher. 0-1 oh, to count. Randy Reddy in oh. on the hands, 1-1. One one. I'm waiting to see if Sparky gets to go against Roger in the World Series. Yeah, you know, Sparky, the last time I saw him last week, Sparky said he and Roger have had several long-distance phone calls cheering each other up and rooting each other in. And Craig has made it, at least this far. Now we'll see if Sparky can make it to the LCS. Wonderful they'll exchange uh, scouting films. I'll reports. tell you one thing. <laughs> Roger, I look for the giant cardinal lcs to be a series of the longest games played all year really why well with craig who loves to call pitch out and go to the mound and manage against a running team mm -hmm. i would think it will be all long games but he's got to stop the running game of the cardinals because that's all they really have that's off sax's glove into center they will hold santiago at third and runners at first and third with nobody out on a double by Santiago and a single by Randy Reddy. You know, Whitey Herzog said yesterday, Jerry, he said very seriously, this was not on the air or with a, a lot of media. We were just sitting in the office. He said, I'm really worried. I don't think Clark or McGee will play. Oh, that's and, a blow. Yeah, and I thought, well, if Clark and McGee don't McGee's play. McGee's out too, huh? Well, yeah, he's got a bad thumb and a bad wrist. Mm. Well, he's lucky that he had Danny Dreesen to come in there and do a pretty good job for him, but now when you're going to start replacing McGee, that's something oh, yeah. else again. Yeah, Lance Johnson is a nice young kid, but... Uh, Not 100 RBI. Oh, though. no, no. 
McGee uh, did not play yesterday, didn't play Friday, won't play today. In fact, the Cardinals are not even going to work out on Monday. Hmm. Whitey said, I just want them to go home. I don't want them to be overwhelmed by media coverage because, you know, if they have a workout Monday, everybody and his brother would be there. So he just said, stay home. Without McGee, it'll kind of be like it was without Coleman, but they went on to win anyway. Yeah. Well, and I think McGee is even more of a catalyst because he can do so much more. More RBI. Yeah. Fly ball into shallow right center. Sack says he's going to take it and then falls down. So the run is going to come in. A pretty good throw by Ralph Bryant, but boy, they really messed up that play. Well, that might be in the highlight film. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that might just sum up what happened all year. Well, somebody should have caught that ball, but I think Sachs acted like he was called off. He was backing up, and somebody just called him off of there, apparently. As he was backing up, he certainly looked over his left shoulder. So the run is in. Mercado holding on to the throw, but that's about all you can say about the play. Tim Flannery is out on deck to bat for Ed Whitson. So it is three to one in favor of the Dodgers in the second inning. Nobody out here. And the tying runs at first and second. Joey Cora, the batter, we'll see if they ask him to bunt. Little guy has a chance to push the tying runs along, and there's nobody out. And there's the bunt in the air foul. On one. Runners at first and second. Randy Reddy at second. Louis Salazar at first. Salazar getting the gift of a base hit and a run batted in on that pop fly. So Sean Hillegas out in the noonday sun. Mad dogs and Englishmen. And the National and American League. Although it's cold in the Midwest. In fact, it was in the low 50s in Detroit yesterday. And they were talking about snow flurries today. But apparently it's fine. When you came into the clubhouse packing your big heavy windbreaker raincoat type thing, I think the guys might have thought you were a little touched <laughs> in the head. I know it, especially <laughs> coming to San Diego where it's 100. But that uh, mass of Arctic air came down from Canada and chilled the Midwest. The fall is in the air, but we don't know what fall is down here. No, you know what happens in the, in the Midwest and in the East. When it gets cold, they blame Canada. Just like in <laughs> Southern California, we blame Mexico. That's right. Sure. <laughs> One and two. We can't have our own kettle. No, never. <laughs> I think in Colorado they blame Texas. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> One and two to Joey Cora with Tim Flannery on deck to bat for Ed Whitson. Two and two the count. Booker's down in the bullpen. So he'll be picking up after Whitson comes out having given up three runs and three hits. Hillegas has walked two and allowed three hits in one inning plus. Of course, in the inning, Santiago a legitimate double. Reddy singled up the middle of Sack's glove, and then Salazar hits a pop fly that was allowed to drop. Hillegas started out with pretty good control this year, but now he's walked uh, 27 in 52 innings, so he's had a little, little control problem. Two balls and two strikes. Full swing and a drive to center. Gonzalez is there and the runners have to hold. So that's an expensive at bat. Cora hitting a fly ball and when you're the size that Cora is, no home run. The worst thing you can do is hit the ball in the air. So here's Tim Flannery, the last of the original Padres, and he'll hit for Whitson. Flannery falling off considerably this year one reason because he has not played as much he's been in and out of the lineup and that usually causes and raises havoc with your batting average so Whitson gave up three runs and three hits in two innings On the corner for a strike on one Eric Gregg boy this is a day where a plate umpire is going to lose a couple of pounds. It is a tough day. 
talking about Flannery he's from Chapman College up in Orange same uh, school that Randy Jones went to mm -hmm. Randy of course the Cy Young winner here gonna have a golf tournament for Randy at uh, Friendly Hills and Whittier oh really uh, in October yeah there'll be a lot of golf tournaments springing up now uh, that's one of them on uh, at uh, Whittier Friendly Hills they'll have one at Los Cotis hosted by Don Baylor uh, Walt, uh, Wally Joyner and uh, Matt Young That'll you be, see what, that story about Wally Joyner who took the pitch yesterday when he had a chance for his uh, fourth. fourth home run. I didn't yeah. see that, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he, he took it for ball four, and apparently it was just off the corner. Guerrero goes to Hoffman for one. Hoffman back to Sharperson, but holding at the bag is ready. So it's a fours play, 3-6. They have a book. They're putting a book together here in San Diego. I'm not sure of the exact title, but it's like 476 of the best things ever said about San Diego. Something like that. And one of the things in the book is a quote by Terry Kennedy when Kennedy played for the Padres before being dealt away to Baltimore. <laughs> it, it can apply to most teams, I think, and it is pretty good. Ball one. Terry Kennedy said... Some days we play like King Kong. The other days we play like Fay Ray. And that summed up the Padres. One ball and no strike. Well. And you folks, if you're not old enough to remember the original King Kong, Fay Ray was the lady in distress in the monster's arms atop the Empire State Building. Poor Terry had to go from San Diego to Baltimore. His living conditions, I'm sure, were not improved. And Baltimore's having a little trouble winning over there, too. They're going to oh. wind up in the, in the pits. What a disaster for Baltimore. Good organization. They're having the problems. They all do. High fly ball into left field. Danny Heath looking up into that bright, hot sky, and that's that. So it's 3-1 to one Dodgers at the end of two, and here are two of the great guys in Dodger history. Forever indelibly written into the Dodger book. Jerry Doggett and Walter Olson. Boy, did he ever care for you. Six centuries ago, in Bavaria, a beer was born. Lohenbrau, German for the lion's brew. Now brewed in England, Japan, Sweden, Canada, and America. Still under license and authority of Lohenbrau Munich. Rich Bavarian flavor brewed fresh and smooth in America. It's the best way in the world to brew beer. This world calls for low and brown right now. Set up your policy, dig up your field. Leave it to the good hands, people. Do it right now or you know you never will. Come into Allstate and compare our low homeowners rates. You might just save some money. Check through your files. Look how you look. Sears Financial Network. I mean, one day you're a piano teacher in some rinky dink town in Wisconsin trying to teach tone deaf brass how to hack out the Blue Danube. <laughs> Next thing you know, your older sister dumps the President of the United States. You run into him in some greasy spoon, he invites you to the White House for the weekend, and ends up standing in your bedroom begging you to move in and take over for the First Lady of the Land. God. Bless America. Mandel and Khan joins Mr. President tonight at 9.30 on Fox Channel 11. Bright spot. Certainly Bob Welch and Oral Hershiser with great earned run averages and a new Alejandro Pena. Seven saves in his last ten outings. There's Alejandro. Sitting on the left is Brian Holden. On the right is Brad Havens and Al sitting in the back. Boy, has he been something in relief, Jerry. He might turn the whole thing around, and he now has reached the stage where he likes it. A long time, he wanted to be a starter. He didn't want any part of being a relief pitcher. And now, all of a sudden, it's a rebirth of a new career for him. And, boy, he might be the guy. He might it's it's interesting, over. too. You know, here's a fellow with a severe arm trouble, and you think, well, gee, if you put him in the yeah. bullpen where he's up every day, his arm will break down. But evidently, he thrives on one or two innings and can do that just about every other day. That would be a good pace for him, and then he wouldn't have to work but an inning or two, and he wouldn't break down. Right. 
So that was indeed a bright spot of 87. The resurgence of Alejandro Pena. Greg Booker, big right-hander with a record of one and one in his 44th game. He has one save, and he might very well be working under a severe handicap here. Got to try to impress the boss, his father-in-law. His father-in-law is Jack McKeon. Everybody knows that Jack is his father-in-law. He is naturally suspect as far as nepotism, and he's trying to show that he belongs on the club. You don't really need excess baggage. It's tough enough in the big leagues. Saxe drives it into left center, so having homered his first time up, he's going to come up with an extra base hit today. He will hold it second with a double. He's trying to reach the 300 mark. He's only got 23 points to go. <laughs> <laughs> he better go into extra innings. So Booker is greeted by a double from Steve Sachs here in the third inning. And Mike Sharperson coming up. Mike single to center in the first inning. He's one for one. How do you like the way this kid moves around? I think he's a third baseman. Yep. I, I, it's hard for me to believe, and of course I haven't seen him play second, but in watching him move at third, it's hard for me to believe he ever played second. Yep. You know, he just looks too big and not quite quick enough. Not fast, but not quick enough. But third, yeah. He's really put together. When they had gotten him and he was coming over, I expected to see somebody uh, on the sack side, you know, a little little quick and small. But he's big. There's a good play. He hit that ball off the handle of the bat and still got it to the right side to advance the runner. So he's going to get a handshake when he gets back into the dugout. Yeah, those are important things to file away on a player. So you know he's a thinker. And he moves his man over a notch, and that leaves it up to Guerrero to get the RBI. Hey, there are all the guys saying, nice going there, Mike. Tried. You give up an at-bat to move a man along. It's three to one Dodgers in the third. And here's Pete. Needs one for 90. Guerrero squibbed that ball off Whitson's glove that went behind Corrin, dribbled out into center field. Strike one. On one. Guerrero followed by Ralph Bryant. Dodgers leading three to one, the last game of the year. A busted bat and a pop fly. Joey Cora angles out to make the catch, and all Sacks can do is hold. So Guerrero shatters his bat, loses a chance for an RBI. He has 90, 89 RBIs. He needs one more, and he hasn't had over a that number since 1983 he had 103 and then he had 1982. You know yesterday Howard Johnson came up with runners at first and second and he had 98 RBIs and he doubled into the right field corner and they held the runner at third. I thought Howard Johnson would cry. He was so broken hearted that he didn't get his 100. I don't know if he gets it today or not but he'll never come closer than yesterday. Boy there's a shot by Brian. Look at that baby to the wall. But it's hauled in by Carmelo Martinez, and it's just a long out. Well, as Jerry's career unfolds before it, here he is with one of the great names in all of baseball history, one Jerome to the other, Dizzy Dean. During the National Open Golf Championship. Would you believe, working together in a golf tournament. Three to one Dodgers in the third. Well, Mayor Oates. Fill her up with soup and 76 unleaded. There's a super spirit. Uh, Murph, is it really the highest octane premium in town? Sure is. Spirit, the highest octane spirit. Hey, Mr. Mayor, look at Super 76. It's more power for your political machine. Oh, no. The spirit. Super 76. New car, highest octane gas. How could the girls resist, Jill? It's me. The spirit. Hi, Mike. She's busy. Wouldn't life be wonderful if you got three chances at everything? Uh, I'm just trying to win a little money here. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep trying. Okay. Introducing Triple Chance, the new lottery game that gives you three chances to win on every ticket. $25,000. I'm Debbie. I'm Arthur. I'm rich. <laughs> Triple Chance. If you got the itch to be rich, scratch a little every day. 
Friends, now's the time to become a subscriber or to renew your subscription to Dodger Blue, the official newspaper of the Dodgers, now brought to you exclusively in the Press-Telegram. You'll receive 18 action-packed issues per year, featuring interviews, timely articles, complete Dodger stats, updates on the Dodger farm teams, a full-color center poster, and much more, all for only $15.95. Keep up with the Dodgers. Order your Dodger Blue by calling 432-NEWS. You'll be glad you did. On the message board here at Jack Murphy Stadium, to Jerry Doggett, congratulations on 32 years as a Dodger broadcaster. Best wishes, the San Diego Padres. And what's nice, Jerry, is I know they mean it. Well, I hope so. I know uh, what was good, though, we used to be the uh, voices of the San Diego baseball fans before the Padres came here. Yeah, they that's right. Good following down here. And uh, by the way, Chubb Feeney dropped by a while ago. He's now the president here. Yeah. Right. Good to see Chubby. Former National League president, formerly the general manager of the San Francisco Giants. Asking for two aside. You know what he said? No. Forget it. <laughs> Sean Abner hits a fly ball to Jose Gonzalez, and we have one away here in the third inning. By the way, a minute ago when we were going out, we had a picture of you and Dizzy Dean. What were you doing? We were covering the uh, U.S. Open Golf Tournament in uh, Dallas in 1952. Uh, we were sending in radio reports uh, on station WFAA. We were, I, I think, right at the 18th green. We were sending in reports. Ah. Uh, we'd have cut-ins, give scores, and leaders like mm -hmm. that. That's back then, before golf television and even golf on radio. Just send in reports. And then later on, Dizzy came to New York to be the television broadcaster of the New York Yankees, and you came with the Brooklyn Dodgers. We both lived in Dallas. Ah. He's a pretty good golfer. Oh yeah, yeah. John Cruck walked in the first inning. One and one to count. It's three to one Dodgers bottom of the third inning. On the last day of the year Sean Hillegas pitching against the Padres. For the Dodgers. They wind up with with a hospital list for surgery after the season. Boy, that's something. So they added her surgery to the list. No I didn't know that. Yeah. Oral her surgery arthroscopic surgery in his right knee Tuesday. Wow, we ought, to, we ought to buy a little stock in the medical outfit up there. Frank Job is going to yeah. be working overtime. Let's see, you have Oral Hershiser, Dave Anderson, and minor league outfielder George Hinshaw. Mike Socia will undergo arthroscopic surgery as well. School's out on Kenny Howell. He might go in there. And of course, Stubbs had a tougher operation than they thought he was going to have. He had to have uh, reconstructive surgery. Mm. What happened to Crook? I wasn't looking. <laughs> he just struck he out. Struck out. Yeah, he struck out. <laughs> Two down, and the batter will be Carmelo Martinez. So Hershiser, who pitched so well last night, was pitching all the while on a bad knee, and he'll go under the knife Tuesday. He slipped and fell last night fielding a ball, and was a little slow getting up. And I don't know whether that aggravated it or not. But here's uh, the ball, just going above us. All in one. I don't need any souvenirs. Yeah, just going to say, don't need one. <laughs> Talking about Coles to Newcastle. Yeah. You ever catch a ball in the booth? Yeah, I, the most embarrassing thing ever happened to me when I first started with the Dodgers, an exhibition game with the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Fly ball to right center, and it'll be Gonzalez. <laughs> Jose taking that one away from Bryant. So it, at the end of three, Dodgers three, Padres one, and talking about great names in Dodger history, here's the captain on the left, Pee Wee Reese, and with him, Jerry Dodgers. That has to be Vero Beach. Yeah. Shopping for meats that make the meal? Here's a mouth-watering Farmer John idea. Hot dogs. So fresh, firm, plump, and perfect. Dress them up to suit yourself. Meat or beef, each with a rich, robust Western flavor from natural smoke. Special from first bite to the last, if there are any left. The East and most in quality, Western most in flavor. Delicious hot dogs from Farmer John. What kind of man whistled the Old Spice tune? He's my daddy. My practically perfect husband. You can count on him. He's the captain of my ship. He's a friend. The Old Spice man, a man's man. 
clean, refreshing Old Spice. It's the favorite scent of the American man, and he'll never change his tune. And I love him for it. Old Spice. Having fun? Seagram's golden white cooler. I'm waiting for my phone. Oh, so when he arrives, that's when the fun starts. She. Pity you don't have a friend. Maybe I do. I have the Seagram's cooler for my friend. And one for mine. Any volunteers? Any one guy? A confident guy? <laughs> I'll do all the talking. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Closing Day 1987. Isn't it nice to have Vin and Jerry going back through the years, 32 years together. You know, there's been no broadcasting duo in the history of Major League Baseball who have been together as long as those two. So this is a very special day for all of us. We invite you to stay with us, too, for the postgame show. We've got some special things planned for Jerry before we turn him loose to play a little extra golf. 3-1 Dodgers. Let's move along to the fourth inning, and Jose Gonzalez to lead it off against Greg Booker of the Padres. Leading off for Los Angeles, the center being Earl Jose Gonzalez. Randall Byers takes over in left field for San Diego as we move along to the fourth inning. So Byers in and Martinez out. And here's Jose Gonzalez banging one foul past third. Gonzalez lifted a scoring fly ball to left field in the opening inning. Carmelo Martinez made a wonderful diving catch. But Guerrero tagged and scored. First three batters in the game reached safely against Ed Whitson for the Dodgers, and they all came around to tally. And Whitson went out after two. Fastball misses. One and one. Big Greg Booker. He's the son-in-law of Padre General Manager Jack McKeon. He's had a good year out of the bullpen in his 45th game. The next one is foul on the screen. So one ball and two strikes to Jose Gonzalez. He'll be followed by Danny Heap and Glenn Hoffman. In the big game in baseball, Detroit still leading Toronto one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Larry Herndon hit a home run off Jimmy Key in the second inning, and Frank Tanana has made it stand up so far. Drive the other way to right, and Sean Abner will one hand it. Here's Danny Heap coming on. He lifted a fly ball to center back in the first inning. Since it's closing day and since all of the divisional races except the one in the American League East have been decided, we thought it'd be kind of fun to look at some of the individual accomplishments on the year, see what some of the teams were able to achieve. Heap takes low, ball one. Certainly one of the more remarkable performances in the second half, not only was the one turned in by Larry Boa of the Padres, whose team was 12 and 42 at one year time, and then for quite a stage of the second half had the second best record in the National League West. That was a feat. But so was the job done by Jim Leland in Pittsburgh. In August the Pirates were nine games behind the Cubs and it appeared there was no way in the world Pittsburgh was going to avoid finishing in last place. And then the Pirates started to get hot. Not only did they pass the Cubs not only for the first time in four years will they not finish in last place. But by beating the Phillies today, Pittsburgh winds up in a fourth place tie with Philadelphia in the National League East. There's only two games under 500 when it's all over. Heap grounds one to second. Joey Cora picks it up and throws him out. So Tua and Glenn Hoffman come into the plate. Hoffman grounded a short his first time up. Montreal's Expos had an outstanding year. And we see Rob Nelson now has taken over from John Crook over at first. Rob Nelson coming from Oakland in the deal that sent Storm Davis from the Potteries to the A's. San Diego also got a relief pitcher named Dave Leeper in that deal. Hoffman takes a strike. No, Buck Rogers did quite a job. A lot of people are going to vote for him as the National League Manager of the Year. Montreal lost today, but they wound up 91 and 71 in the East. Owen to Hoffman. The Mets are beating the Cardinals six to five in the eighth. 
If New York goes on and wins that game, then St. Louis will finish three games ahead of New York and four in front of Montreal. The Mets will have won 92 and been on the outside looking in when the playoffs begin Tuesday in St. Louis. That'll do it for Hoffman and for the Dodgers. They're gone in order for the second time. And at the end of three and a half, still Dodgers three, Padres one. And Mickey Hatcher, we certainly enjoyed having you on the ball club. You have kept us all loose. Presenting the Nissan Maxima, the only sedan in the world with A-Class luxury and Z-Class performance. With the luxury of body-hugging sports seats, power windows and sunroof, three-way adjustable shocks, and the performance of 0 to 55 in 7.5 seconds. The Nissan Maxima SE. Special incentives to dealers from Nissan could help you save big at your Nissan dealer now, but hurry, time's limited. When it comes to autofocus cameras, some give you part of the action, but Canon EOS gives you all of the action. When it's so dark that some can't focus, EOS doesn't miss a trick. And Canon EOS has computers and motors in every lens for fast focus. So great shots are easy and so creative, the competition is out of the picture. EOS, more than autofocus, easier than ever. Buy EOS today with no money down, low monthly payments at participating Canon dealers. Friends, you can now be placed on the season ticket waiting list to be part of the action for all 81 games at Dodger Stadium in 1988. Exciting Dodger baseball, an extensive promotional lineup, and great family entertainment will be highlighted throughout the season, beginning with opening day against the San Francisco Giants, April the 4th. To get your name on the 1988 season ticket waiting list, send your name, address, and telephone number to Season Tickets, Dodger Stadium, LA 90012. Continuing to look at the achievements of major leaguers this year, of course, Wade Boggs' season's over, but he winds up with a 363 average in Boston to win the league batting title. Mark McGuire of the A's, what a story he's been. Will Mark at 24 today become the youngest 50 home run hitter in major league history? Well, they're in the seventh inning, and Mark has not homered as yet this afternoon. George Bell, 134 RBIs in Toronto, and of course, some outstanding performances this year along the line of Major League Baseball. When Tony Gwynn checked out in the first inning today, and he walked his only time up, he finished with a 370 average. And you've got to go back to Stan Musial in 1948 to find anybody who hit that high in the National League. Stan, the man hit 376 that year. Benito Santiago with another base hit. When you talk about outstanding showings, add this. 22-year-old rookie from Puerto Rico to your list. Santiago not only has doubled and single today, he's hit safely in 40 the last 42. Pedro Guerrero congratulates him, and Benny is through for the year, and listen to the ovation. I'll tell you another thing about Santiago. Oh, yes, he's young, he's wiry, he's strong, but he caught 146 games for San Diego this year. That is some achievement. Jimmy Jones, who was last night's winning pitcher, goes in as the pinch runner for Santiago. Santiago started the day at 298. He went two for two. We don't know whether that got him to 300 or not, but what a rookie year he had. And here is Jones. Coming on is the pinch runner. That's Dave Leeper that we told you came along along with Rob Nelson in the deal from Oakland getting ready in the Padre bullpen. Randy Reddy who singled his first time up takes low ball one. John Hilligus trying to finish the year above 500 with the Dodgers at four and three. And he busts him inside and missed ball two, two and zero. Oh. Cardinals have tied the Mets six six as they go to the ninth inning. We don't know whether Howard Johnson has driven in a run or not today. High fastball foul back two and one. Johnson needed one RBI this afternoon to become the first major league infielder ever to hit 30 home runs, drive in 100 runs, and steal 30 bases. And another thing, he had almost 30 errors. 
So he was truly in the 30, 30, 30, 30 club, or almost. We do know that Roger Clemens, in pitching that two-hit shutout over Milwaukee today, did something that hadn't been done in 10 years in the American League. Pitch inside for ball. Clemens became the first American League Cy Young Award winner in 10 years to win 20 games the year after he was honored. The last guy to do it was Jim Palmer. And today Clemens struck out 12. Three balls and two strikes to Randy Reddy. Clemens also wound up leading baseball in shutouts with seven and in complete games with 18. And how much time did he miss at the start of the year? He missed at least a month, and he still won 20. Remarkable. Ready, still up there, three and two. Clemens is the last American League pitcher to have back-to-back 21 -back seasons since Tommy John did it in 1979 and 1980. I'll tell you, Clemens has got as good a chance as anybody to win the Cy Young Award again this year. Now the 3 2 pitch from Hillegas to Reddy, breaking ball foul back. Steve Bedrosian lost today when the Pirates beat the Phillies 4 2. But Bedrosian wound up with the most saves in baseball, 40. And there are people who say, hey, he's got a good shot at anybody to win the National League Cy Young Award. That's ball four, and Reddy's on. So again, the Padres have the tie and runs on. Nobody out. Same thing happened in the second inning, and Hillis got, Hillis got out of it. Now, after his He's third walk of the game, he'll face Luis Salazar. Salazar singled in the San Diego run in the second inning, not the first. Tim Belcher has been a pleasant surprise to the Dodgers after coming from the Oakland organization and the deal for Rick Honeycutt, talking with assistant trainer Charlie Strasser. And out of the Dodger bullpen area, a little activity. Pitches foul back. There is Matt Young, the Sheik of La Cunada. <laughs> Mark's brother, or a match brother, Marty, is along today. Mike Sosha taking the day off, seated alongside Young. Sharperson coming in to talk to Hilligan. I'll tell you who had another big year in baseball, too, and he may not be the MVP, but he had a career season this year. That was Southern Californian Tim Wallach at Montreal. Salazar fouls it into Mercado's glove, strike one. Wallach drove in three more runs today, although Montreal lost to Chicago 7-5. to five. So Tim wound up with 123 runs batted in. Jones at second, ready at first, nobody out, fourth inning. Dodgers three, Padres one. Driven to center. Gonzalez going back to one hand, and the runners will hold on. One out for Joey Cora, who lined out to Gonzalez his first time up. They're in the bottom of the seventh inning in Detroit. Tigers one, Blue Jays nothing. Frank Tanana trying to best Jimmy Key and Larry Herndon's home run in the second inning has accounted for the only scoring. Remember a week ago yesterday Toronto was three and a half games ahead of Detroit. A lot of people said well it's all over. But since then Toronto has gone ice cold. The Blue Jays have lost six in a row. And they are down to their last six outs this afternoon. If Toronto wins a one game playoff tomorrow in Detroit. Cora the former Vanderbilt star takes a strike. Joy was the Padres number one draft choice two summers ago. He was stabbed after a game in the Texas League last year was out for about two months. He rolls it slowly up toward first to Guerrero. All Pete can do is kick the bag and the other runners move up. Jones to third ready to second. But now two out of the inning. Booker do up. But it looks as if Bo is going to go for a pinch hitter. Tell 
That's Shane Mack. It is a former UCLA star out of Cerritos. He'll bat for Greg Booker, who went two scoreless innings in relief today. Well, Minnesota's twins certainly did not have the impetus they wanted to go into that American League Championship Series opener Wednesday at home. Kansas City just beat the twins 10 to 1. So Minnesota finishes the regular season with five consecutive losses. And as a result of that game today, a Dodger record stands. Shane Mack swings and misses. Kirby Puckett had to hit two home runs today to enable the Twins to tie the 1977 Dodger Quartet as the only major league club to have four 30 home run hitters in the season. And obviously Puckett didn't hit 10, two home runs. Mack takes, ball one, one and one. So the streak. 40, 30 home run hitters. Reggie Smith, Steve Garvey, Ron Say, and Dusty Baker is intact for another year. Hillegas is ahead of Mack, one and two. Dodgers got three in the first inning. Got them quickly. Sacks opened the game with a home run off Ed Whitson. Mike Sharperson single. Pedro Guerrero doubled off Whitson's glove to stretch his hitting streak to 17. Ralph Bryant's ground out got the second run home. Jose Gonzalez's fly ball got the third one in. Padres came back on a double by Santiago and singles by Reddy and Salazar to pick up one in the second. And Hilligas trying to get out of a scrape here in the fourth. Runners at second and third and two out. And Shane Mack lines one to center and Jose Gonzalez is there. So another fine pitching job by Sean Hilligas after the first two men got on. And in San Diego in 1987 when they think about the season they will remember the great accomplishments of the youngster Benito Santiago. It's real. I know it's real. There was a time when there was only one kind of beer. Rich, smooth, draft beer. It wasn't pasteurized or tampered with. It was just real beer. Miller Genuine Draft is as real as that. It's not heat pasteurized like most other beers. It's cold filtered, so it's as rich and smooth as only real draft beer can be. Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. You know what drives me nuts about L.A. radio stations? I can't listen to any of them. Check it out. I'm supposed to make a choice here? Finally, there's a station that plays all classic rock all the time. Stones, Steely Dan, Beatles. KLSX, we brought classic rock back to Southern California. 97.1, KLSX, classic rock for Southern California. Hi, I'm Mike. She's busy. Wouldn't life be wonderful if you got three chances at everything? Uh, I'm just trying to win a little money here. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep trying. Okay. Introducing Triple Chance, the new lottery game that gives you three chances to win on every ticket. $25,000. I'm Debbie. I'm Arthur. I'm rich. <laughs> Triple Chance. If you got the itch to be rich, scratch a little every day. Mark Perrin, who spent most of the year in Las Vegas, takes over behind the plate for the Padres. And left-hander Dave Leeper comes in to pitch. Ed Whitson, Greg Booker, and now Dave Leeper hurling for the Padres this afternoon. Leeper pitched here Friday night and in two innings gave up two runs to the Dodgers. Orlando Mercado will lead off. Orlando working behind the plate this afternoon. Only his third at bat as a Dodger, and he fouls it back. Orlando was with the Texas Rangers organization last year, then went to the Detroit Tigers chain. Came to the Dodgers in a deal for minor league pitcher Balvino Galvez this spring. What about 278 at Albuquerque. And lines one fair into the left field corner. Chasing it down is Byers. And by the time he gets it, Mercado's into second. With his first hit in the National League, a leadoff double in the fifth. For the Dodgers, their third double among their six hits. Guerrero and Sachs had the others. Sachs also hit a home run to open the game. 
Orlando, Orlando pulling the ball and has two bases on this one. Here's Sean Hilligus still looking for his first hit in the big leagues, but he may be bunting in this spot. He struck out on the second. Put it onto the screen, strike one. Remember when it appeared that Eric Davis was a cinch to become baseball's first player ever to hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases in the season? Well, Eric has been stuck on 37 home runs since September 17th when he hit one at Dodger Stadium. There's a bunt, that's foul. 0 and 2 to Hilligans. They are in the ninth inning in Houston today. Cincinnati leading the Astros 2 to 1. And no, Davis did not hit even his 38th home run today. So no 40 40 member yet in the history of Major League Baseball. Mercado trying to get a good lead off of second. The pitch a little bit low. One and two to Sean Hilligans. Sacks on deck. And Eric Gregg has called a balk on Dave Leeper. Eric will be working the National League Championship Series this coming week. Detected Leaper doing something that was a balk move. So Mercado at third, and Hilligus chases one outside the strike zone and goes down swinging. That's the first out, but if you're an optimist, you say that's as good as a sacrifice bunch, Sean, because of the ball. All right, here's Sachs with the pottery infield in. Steve is homered to left and double to left center. Remember last year he had a 25 game hitting streak in September hit safely in 31 of his last 32 well he's done just about the same thing this year. Sacks hit safely in 24 of his final 25 games. He's a 279 and he takes a low ball one. Sacks is like a lot of other Dodgers concerned about their future. Who's coming back in 1988. Bounced up the middle and in the center. Sacks with his third straight hit. Mercado scores, and the Dodgers lead four to one here in the fifth inning. And Steve may well have gotten to 280 on this closing day of the campaign. Sacks is shaking his head. No, no, no over at first base. I think that somebody said you want a pinch runner. And I think Steve says, no, I want to stay on. Number 16. So one out, a run in. Leaper now will face Sharperson. Mike has singled and bounced out. At the end of seven, Detroit won, Toronto nothing. Toronto's bats just went frigid the last 10 days. Ground ball to third. Nice play by Reddy. He goes down to Cora. Back to Nelson for a double play. The Dodgers, though, get a run on two hits. And at the end of four and a half innings, Dodgers four, Padres one. Excuse me, your phone? Rough ride, huh? I'll be calling a cab. Stan, it was just a couple of glitches in my engine. Glitches? <laughs> Excuse me. Coffee cup? Coffee. Thank you. I think it's just clogged fuel injectors. Are they hard to fix? You're fixing them. 76 gasolines are the best at cleaning port fuel injectors. And no gas keeps them cleaner. Stan, good news. It was just my fuel injectors. The spirit of 76. Uh, village cab. 555-8000. It's Jerry, Jerry. Jerry Coca-Cola. It's got a taste that's hard to beat. Cherry Coke now has more cherry taste than ever before. Try the cheriest Cherry Coke ever. It's very cherry, cherry Coca-Cola. It's got a taste that's all you need. Try Cherry Coke and Diet Cherry Coke. You can't beat the feeling. Fans, you can now keep the memory of the 25th anniversary of Dodger Stadium with a limited edition pin set. Dodger Stadium memories are highlighted in this six-pin collector series encased in an attractive oak wood frame. The official 25th anniversary set is sure to make a great addition to your baseball collection. 
To order your limited edition commemorative pin set, send $30 plus $3 mailing and handling to Dodger Pin Set, Dodger Stadium, Los Angeles, 90012. Craig Shipley takes over at third for the Dodgers, and even though he may not want it to come out of the ballgame, Steve Sachs does leave, and Mike Sharperson will move from third to second for the Dodgers. So Sean Hillegas again with a three-run lead. We've seen Sharperson play second and third. He was at second base with the Blue Jays at the start of the year, was in about 30 games. Then went to the minors, and at Syracuse, he played almost all the time at third base. But these are the games which managers and coaches want to see what a player can do at various positions if he has that versatility, and Sharperson does. So he'll close off at second today. Here's Sean Abner to lead it off against Hilligan's. Final score in the American League, the White Sox beat the A's 5-2. to two. White Sox played well down the stretch. Oakland winds up at 500 on the year. Abner, who came on in the second inning for Tony Gwynn and flied to left, takes ball one. That's lifted into right. Ralph Bryant's there and makes the catch. So one away. Stan Jefferson will come up. He's grounded into a double play and fly to center. That victory by the White Sox assures Chicago of finishing fifth in the American League West. The Angels and the Rangers began the day tied for next to last and last places. Texas is losing 7-2 to, to Seattle in the seventh. That's foul. Only one to Jefferson. The Angels are losing 8-3 to three in the seventh to Cleveland. The Angels went into the weekend in a position where they could have become the first major league team in 73 years to go from first place to last place in one year. That is high, one and one. Remember in the middle of August, the Angels were only two and a half games out of first place. At one time, they were 12 games ahead of the White Sox, and they're going to finish behind Chicago. One and two is the count to Stan Jefferson. So technically, I guess you could say, well, the Angels wound up in a sixth-place tie this year with Texas if today's games wind up the way they're going now. But you could also say they tied for last place. Angels haven't finished last since 1975. Good breaking ball by Hilligus in on the hands, but Jefferson stayed alive. Toronto didn't score off Frank Tanana in the eighth inning. Tigers won, Blue Jays nothing at the end of seven and a half, and the Jays down to their last three outs. Two balls and two strikes to Stan Jefferson. Detroit's been awesome against right-handers. They are eight games under 500 against left-handers. But Larry Herndon's second inning home run has Tanana ahead. Jefferson keeps fouling them off. In Toronto's six-game losing streak, the Blue Jays have managed to score only 16 runs. Jefferson may need a new bat. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Dodgers four, Padres one. I'm Ross Porter with Ben Scully and Jerry Dodger. Sentimental, emotional day for us in the Dodger broadcast booth, and I know many of you have the same feelings. Great career for Jerry. Drawing to a close today, 32 years as a Dodger broadcaster. Hilligus keeps throwing strikes, and Jefferson keeps protecting the plate. This is going to be the first time in six years the Padres will finish last. They have not lost this many games in a season since 1974. They have dropped 96, and they're down today. Hilligus misses, and we've got a full count. Good crowd on hand on closing day at Jack Murphy Stadium. The Beach Boys are going to hold their sixth straight concert here on closing day after it's over. Jefferson draws ball four. Well, Hilligus has walked his fourth man. One on one out, and here's Rob Nelson. 
Nelson taking over from John Crook at first base. When they put out the all-star ballots this year, they didn't know who to put at first base from the Oakland A's. So they put Rob Nelson and left out a guy named Mark McGuire. <laughs> and now Nelson's been dealt to the National League. Got a little power. 23 years old. He was the A's starting first baseman on opening day. And he drives it foul. Nelson's only had eight at bats. One base hit as a Padre. While we got a moment, we want to pass along our very best wishes to Randy Layson, who is usually one of our cameramen for these Dodger games. Randy is in Pasadena Memorial Hospital, recuperating from a broken neck, but we hope he's watching the game today. And Randy, our thoughts are with you and look forward to having you back next year. 0 oh 2 to Rob Nelson. Jefferson at first, one out, 4 1 Dodgers in the fifth. Just missed, one and two. While we're passing out accolades, we doff our caps to Mark Wolfson, Tony Jock Boosie, Bill Finley, Mark Rita, Jake Jacobson, all the gang from Fox Channel 11. Thanks again, guys, for a great year. Runner goes, the pitch low, the throw by Mercado to Hoffman, too late. The Padres second in baseball in steals. Only the St. Louis Cardinals have swiped more bases this year. It's 198 steals for San Diego. Count the Nelson two and two. Got him. So Hilligus chalks up his second strikeout. Two out on the fifth. And Randall Byers coming up. Byers spent the year at Las Vegas where he hit 274. A strike call. You know the last six games between Detroit and Toronto have been settled by one run. And here the Tigers ahead one nothing in the bottom of the eighth today. What a great race they had. Took something off. Byers chased it and missed. 0 oh 2. Baltimore beat the Yankees today 4 2. Tom Needenfuer got the save. The Mets just came up with five runs in the ninth inning in St. Louis to lead 11 to 6. But apparently New York's going to finish second in the East. Three back of the Cardinals. One ball and two strikes to Randall Byers. You know Minnesota wound up winning the American League West by only two games over Kansas City. KC won the last five. Twins lost the last five. John Hilligus has weathered a couple of storms today. Trying to get the final out in the fifth inning to qualify for a victory. He's ahead 4-1. Myers fouls it back. The Giants in their final tune-up before the National League Championship Series opener Tuesday night in St. Louis. Tied with the Braves, 3-3, bottom of the fourth at San Francisco. Will Clark is at his 34th homer today. What a year for the natural. And Hilligus strikes out Byers. We go to the sixth. Dodgers four, Padres one, and Dodger trainer Bill Bueller always trying to help a hot umpire. Shopping for meats that make the meal, here's another delectable idea from Farmer John. The Farmer John Golden Tradition Ham. Lean, tender, and juicy, slice after slice. Now pre-sliced and 93% fat-free. 
with the same smoked savory western flavor that made Farmer John a tradition in Southland homes for over three generations. Golden Tradition hams available in whole or half portions. A golden tradition from Farmer John. Introducing power and price you've never seen in a compact 4x4. The new lower price Nissan Hard Body V6. More horsepower, dollar for dollar, than any leading compact truck. Big and broad, high and wide. There's nothing ordinary about this truck, nothing but the price. Special incentives to dealers from Nissan could help you save big at your Nissan dealer now, but hurry, time's limited. Hey, me fella, look here. Seagulls, boy, do I'm cool of seagulls. Go to I'm cool of his wind and his dry. told you that Roger Clemens joined Dave Stewart today as the only 20 game winners in baseball this year. Mark Langston went into the day eight strikeouts ahead of Clemens. We told you Roger had 12 in his shutout of Milwaukee. We don't know how many Langston has as he goes for his 19th win and he's got a big lead over Texas but that'll be interesting to watch. Jimmy Key was leading baseball and earned run average behind Nolan Ryan before today and Key's given up a one run to Detroit but it was a home run by Larry Herndon and the Blue Jays are down to their last three outs in Detroit. One nothing Detroit. Tom Hinkey with 34 saves. Did Hinkey ever win a game this year? He's 0 6 the last time I looked. Sixth inning. Dodgers four. Padres one. Talking about big years. Pedro Guerrero's had one. Swings and doesn't get it. Guerrero has doubled and popped up today, but he closes with a 17 game hitting streak. You talk about numbers. Guerrero in day games at 325. Night games, 343. Home games 325. Road games 351. 0 oh 2. On grass fields, Guerrero batted 333. On turf, 354. Against right handed pitchers, 322. Against left handers, 373. With men in scoring position, 350. Is that consistency? 1 and 2. Pedro and Denise expecting their first baby shortly. So it'll be a hectic offseason for Pedro Guerrero. Outside for ball. Dodgers got three in the first. Pottery's got one in the second. Dodgers scored one in the fifth. Now we're in the sixth. And he chased one and struck him. So Dave Leeper with his second strikeout. Ralph Bryant coming up in San Diego. And Toronto coming up in the ninth inning at Detroit, trailing the Tigers 1 0. Frank Tanana and Jim Key have gone all the way. Larry Herndon hit a home run on this. And that has been it. High for a ball. Tommy Lasorda completing his 11th season at the helm of the Dodgers. One one. It's also interesting on the final day of the season to look at the teams who spent the most money on players salaries this year in baseball and see how they came out of the standings. Ryan takes ball one, now ball two, two and one. You know, the Dodgers were number one this year in average salary in the major. Brian, a chopper to second. Joey Cora gets him. Two to one. The average Dodger player salary this year was $580,000. The Dodgers are going to wind up fourth in the National League West. Second in salaries, the Chicago Cubs. They finished last in the National League East. Third, the Boston Red Sox. 
They wound up fifth in the American League East. Fourth highest player payroll in baseball, the Yankees. They finished fourth in the American League East. Jose Gonzalez takes the ball. Mickey Hatcher on deck, ready to bat for Danny Heath. One and one to Jose. Fifth player payroll salary, the Orioles. They finished sixth in the American League East. Sixth, the Mets. They're going to finish second in the National League East. There's a line drive, short hop, nicely at shortstop by Salazar, who throws him in. We'll talk more about the player salary when we come back. The end of five and a half, Dodgers four, Padres one. are the real things. And draft beer is the real beer. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. They call these crispy golden ocean shrimp. Isn't that a mouthful? Jack in the Box Restaurants introduces finger foods. I think they deserve a hand. There's crispy egg rolls, golden shrimp, or chicken strips. As an appetizer or a main course, they'll do in a pinch. New finger foods from Jack in the Box. Serious food that's fun to eat. I think they deserve another hand. Friends, you can now order a 1988 Dodger schedule to plan an outing to Dodger Stadium for your family or group. Groups of 30 or more will receive a free group promotional kit with tips on staging a successful night at Dodger Stadium. There'll be lots of exciting baseball action and great family entertainment throughout the 88 season. For group ticket information or for a 1988 Dodger schedule, write to Dodger Ticket Office, Dodger Stadium, LA 90012. Plan now to be part of it. Even though he's got a sore knee which forced him to miss a start Friday night after he was in the original lineup, Chris Gwynn goes to left field in the sixth inning this afternoon for the Dodgers. And Mickey Hatcher, who was in the on-deck circle ready to bat for Danny Heap, comes in to play first base. Dodgers leading the Padres 4-1, to one, and Sean Hillegas on a warm afternoon in the border city. Working on a four-hitter. We'll be looking at Mark Parent, Randy Reddy, and Luis Salazar. Back to the player salaries, and before we do that, we're going to tell you that the Detroit Tigers just beat the Toronto Blue Jays one to nothing. So congratulations to Sparky Anderson and the Tigers. They needed 98 wins, but they've done it. And they're in the playoffs Wednesday against Minnesota. Wow, what a comeback. Three and a half games behind last weekend. That's Andy Hawkins getting ready in the San Diego bullpen. Check swing, it'll cost him. So Toronto won the first three games of last week's series. The Tigers managed to win an extra innings last Sunday. And when they got to Detroit this weekend, the Tigers won all three. That's a hard way to do it, isn't it? Parrott fouls it into Mercado's glove, and that is strike three. And for Hillegas, his fourth strikeout. One out, Randy Reddy coming up. He is singled and walked. Well, where do we leave you on the player salaries? Dodgers, Cubs, Red Sox, Yankees, Orioles, and Mets. Seven would be the Phillies. They tied for fourth and fifth in their division. And eighth would be the Braves, and they're going to finish fifth in the National League West. 0 and 1 to Reddy. So when you get through with it, and you look at the top eight player salaries in baseball, player payrolls, the Mets were second in their division. Three teams finished fourth, two finished fifth, two finished sixth, and that's given the benefit of the doubt on the ties. Okay, how the divisional champions do? Well, the Tigers were ninth, the Cardinals were 10th, the Twins were 11th, and the Giants were 19th in player salaries. And Randy Reddy may have a home run. He does. That's a dozen for the ex-Brewer. And that makes the Dodgers four, Potteries two.
Reddy, who hit a home run last weekend at Dodger Stadium and missed twice of hitting others, connects this afternoon. Fifth home run given up by Hillegas in about oh, almost 60 innings. So 4-2 Dodgers. One out on the sixth. Here's Salazar. He singled in the first San Diego run and then lined out to Gonzalez. Powering fly ball. If it's fair, it's gone. It's a foul ball. Hillegas is fortunate. And Lasorda says bear down. Little chin music after a near dinger. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Salazar. Good breaking ball by Hillegas. One and two. So, in the standings, it was not a good season for the Dodgers, the Angels, or the Padres. But certainly the Southern California fans supported their ball club. Dodgers drew 2.8 million, the Angels 2.7 million, and the Padres 1.4 million. Add it up, and you got almost 7 million people who came through the turnstiles to see the three Southern California teams. Brad Havens and Tim Cruz up in the Dodger bullpen. Certainly the Dodgers want to thank their loyal fans for their support again this year. Ground ball to second. Sharperson will throw out Salazar. Hatcher had to find the bag, but he did. And two away. The Dodgers today trying to avoid their first 90 defeat season since 1944. And they're winning four to two, two out bottom of the six. Here's Joey Cora, who's lined out and grounded out. We're going to miss Jerry Doggett tremendously. Well, we welcome Don Drysdale to our broadcasting crew, and he'll be with us in Florida. It all begins March 4th. The Dodgers and the Minnesota Twins of Vero Beach. Stay well. Have a good off season. Ball two strikes to Joey Cora. A run in on Randy Ruddy's homer, but the Dodgers still leading 4 2. Breaking ball got him swinging. Vin and Jerry will be back in a moment at the end of the six on closing day Dodgers four, Padres two. the car the number nine Ford Thunderbird Bill Elliott's race car this is Bill Elliott's motor oil Unical 76 it's won every grand national race he's won it's the same oil you can buy for your car at 76 stations and this this is Bill Elliott ready boys go with the spirit try Bill's motor oil spirit of 76 Hi, I'm Mike. She's busy. Wouldn't life be wonderful if you got three chances at everything? Uh, I'm just trying to win a little money here. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep trying. Okay. Introducing Triple Chance, the new lottery game that gives you three chances to win on every ticket. $25,000. I'm Debbie. I'm Arthur. I'm rich. <laughs> Triple Chance. If you got the itch to be rich, scratch a little every day. One weekend a month, you can take off for the beach, the mountains, or a drive in the country in the Army Reserve. Subject spotted. Be all that you can be. It's no picnic, but it's the kind of excitement no other weekend offers. Mission completed. We're heading home. And you'll still have three weekends a month to take off on your own. Find your future in the Army Reserve. 
everybody. Once again, Vin Scully along with Jerry Doggett here at Jack Murphy Stadium. And so far for the Dodgers, so far so good. Not too bad. Sean Hillig is pitching a pretty good game out there. He gave up a home run a minute ago. Dodgers making their lead stand up, and maybe they'll hold on here and, and finish in a blaze of glory. And isn't it nice? It's a crisp fall day, and there is a nice breeze coming in off the lake. Let's go down to the beach after this is over. Take a little swim, okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look about the seventh inning and see what's going on down there. to the seven four to two Dodgers and boy are they putting on a show that we'll get them a little later but those three vendors do some great rocking and rolling and a little bit of styling in the aisle styling in the aisle Andy Hawkins and we'll compare and you can see what kind of a year the Hawk has had and among other things a disastrous fall off as far as strikeouts are concerned the Hawkins going to work. Want to know the count. Vinny, Andy Hawkins and I have something in common. Oh, what's that? Well, we've both done a lot of fishing with my brother-in-law in Texas. Oh. That's really? kind of a strange connection, but uh, that's the way it is. Hot one to third. And Reddy takes care of Mickey Hatchie. One away. Well, how come? As he was a kid growing up, he was a neighbor of my brother-in-law in Texas. And... Uh, they would take him out to, to the fishing camp as he was uh, went to school with their son. Ah. So they were good uh, good buddies, good friends, and he's just a little toddler, nine or ten years old. He'd get in that boat and go fishing with us. You know, you're talking about fishing as we see Kenny Landro coming out of the Dodger dugout to bat. They were asking Dale Murphy about playing ball for the Atlanta Braves, and Dale Murphy said it's a lot more fun fishing when you catch fish <laughs> and I think that's exactly what he meant as far as baseball and Kenny hasn't been catching much fish either as his comparison shows he's off by a lot and just like that we have two down and Orlando Mercado coming up we're in the seventh with the Dodgers leading the Padres four to two in the final game of the year the final game of the year for Toronto today as Detroit defeated Toronto one to nothing Frank Tanana, a Detroit boy, beating Jimmy Key on a home run by Larry Herndon. Silent Larry. He's a really a great guy. You don't hear much about him, but he really helped that team. Boy, and how. And, of course, among other things, Herndon at one time with the San Francisco Giants, as was Darrell Evans. And, of course, Bill Madlock is on that team. And Madlock certainly made his contribution to the Tigers. He played with the Giants too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. So now if the Giants and the and the Tigers play in the World Series, there's going to be a, a lot of handshaking going on. <laughs> yeah, and Sparky, of course, had Roger Craig as his pitching coach. Yeah. That's hit to the hole and through, so Mercado comes up with his second hit. He had doubled and struck out and now singles to right. And Sean Hillegas will give way to Mike Socia. Socia will bat for Hillegas. Kelly just pitched very well again, Vinny, so you got to really put him down for one of the highlights of the end of this year and maybe an outstanding prospect for next season. Yeah, six innings, two runs, and five hits. And Sean now cooling off in the far corner of the dugout. And I tell you, cooling off today is no mean trick. About 100 degrees. Though Mercado was at first, held on by Nelson, and the batter is Socia. I got to tell you something. What's that? Thinking about cooling off. He's going back in the in the dressing room now. It's going to be cool back there. I went in the dressing room Friday night, looked in the training room, looked in the whirlpool. Who do you think was in the whirlpool? I don't know. Bill Russell. Uh-oh. We'll, <laughs> we'll have to get on his case. <laughs> I did. Ground ball hit slowly up the middle, and they will go to first easily, and that's that. Now, we're talking about Jerry and his career and so many friends. How about this picture, Jerry? Uh-huh. Walter Francis O'Malley. All right. Ray Bolger, right. Jerry Doggett. Yeah. I'm not sure who the gentleman is That's on the left. Uh, Fred Hartley of the Union Oil Company. Fred Trumpet. Hartley. Mr. Fred the, Hartley, yeah. And you know, I wouldn't recognize well, him. Well, he had there. his hat pulled down over his eyes. See, we told him, pull your hat up, pull your hat up, so people can recognize him, but he well, didn't do it. I'll tell you one thing, you always hung around with the high rent district. <laughs> we'll be right back.
shopping for meats that make the meal, here's another tempting idea from Farmer John. And mamma mia, it's a good one. New Italian sausage. Prepared the old world way with the care and attention in the Farmer John tradition. The farmer's gone Italian, and it's just like mama used to make. Old country ways and the Farmer John tradition. It doesn't get any better. Look for the festive Italian sausage packages, sweet or hot. Bring home the Italian sausage from Farmer John. I am master of ancient art of karate, kung fu, and the Chinese chuckle. Oh, what the one about the socializing? Oh, I always reach for a cold a Miller Light. Light tastes great. Light less a feeling too. Anybody want the pepperoni? Ancient proverb, only one light beer, Miller Lite. Imagine looking down the barrel of a Don Drysdale fastball, trying to sneak a curveball past Duke Snyder. Well, these dreams come to life at the Dodgers' ultimate adult baseball camp at Dodgertown, February 10th through the 16th. Enjoy five days of instruction and coaching from 12 Hall of Famers, including Lou Brock, Harmon Killebrew, Catfish Hunter, Ernie Banks, Frank Robinson, Warren Spahn, and others. The Dodgers' ultimate adult baseball camp at Dodgertown, February 10th through the 16th. In the bottom of the seventh inning, with the Dodgers leading the Padres 4-2, to two, Dave Anderson takes over at third. Tim Cruz will be at, on the mound for Sean Hilligan. So in a sense, we get a little glimpse of 88 in looking at Hilligus and Cruz and then seeing some of the, the young infielders like Mike Sharperson and a couple of the outfielders like Bryant and Gonzalez. 4-2 Dodgers in the seventh inning. Here's a young man who might really surprise you. He, he was with the Milwaukee organization, came in the trade with Tim Leary for Greg Brock. Of course, he's been here about two months now and has pitched very well. And, uh, he can shore up that bullpen also. I think that Tommy's number one priority would be to bolster the infield, and his number two would be to, to patch up the bullpen and keep everybody healthy down there. And Cruz just might be one of those guys. And, of course, a man who could be, we were talking about him earlier, a mainstay of the bullpen would be Alejandro Pena. Well, he's been something down the stretch. He, he loves it now. Bruce Boshi comes off the bench to bat for Andy Hawkins. So Boshi followed by Abner and then Jefferson in the bottom of the seventh and the Dodgers leading the Padres four to two. Oh and one. Tim Cruz is a delightful person to be around. He's really happy to be here and he works hard and you really want to pull for a guy like him. He's really a, a nice guy. I think some of these pitchers and certainly Tim Cruz and Brad Havens would fall into that category as Anderson takes care of Boshi, one away. The biggest thing, they have the ability, they need the confidence. They need right. to know that they can pitch up here. I would imagine, and you know, we've been around baseball players so many, many times, that when you come to players who would be so-called fringe players, that might be the thing that tilts them one way or the other, the yeah. confidence factor. Yeah. I, I, and I'm sure uh, that Cruz, Havens, they would certainly fall into that category. They haven't proven to themselves yet that they belong. Pretty hard to prove it to anybody else. There's another fellow down there named Bill Kruger who might become that kind of a player. Mm -hmm. That's just fair. A little flair for Abner. And he will get himself a double. So it's Abner's double day. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> I bet you've been waiting all year for that. You know, one. it sounded like that, but so help me, I didn't think of it till I started to say Abner double. And all right. Most people would have been glad if I didn't think of it. That reminds me, you know the definition of a gentleman? A gentleman is a man who knows how to play the saxophone and doesn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that makes Larry Boa scratch right. his head. It's a good thing this is the closing day. <laughs> right. Here's Stanley Jefferson coming up. They wouldn't let us back tomorrow. Jefferson hit into a double play, flied out and walked, stole a base. He's 0 for 2. That's hit up the middle, but Sharperson is there. And Hatcher pulls it down for the second out while Abner moves over to third. 
And now Abner's, a, now Abner's a third, so Abner triple day. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and coming up now will be Nelson, the first baseman. Rob Nelson has had one at bat and struck out. The Beach Ballin. Boys are going to have a concert here after the game. Maybe they'll move it all to the beach. It'll be a little cooler over there. It's a great name for the act. <laughs> beach Boys. Wow. A post-game concert here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Boy, Eric Gregg, his shirt is ringing wet. We were talking about the plate umpire, and from upstairs looking at that broad back of his, and to add to everything else, he has to wear that inside chest protector. He is swimming down there. Got his shirt unbuttoned. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> He'll take it off in a minute. One and two, the count. There, you can see perspiration just drenching the shirt. Popped up around the plate. Mercado coming to the base of the screen. Makes the play. So an easy seventh inning for Tim Cruz. No run to hit a man left. Here's a great moment in Dodger history. Jerry Doggett being drowned by Joe Ferguson and Steve Garvey, so I assume that's somewhere around 77, 78. Yeah, some, one of those things. Uh, I had my raincoat on, but they stole my hat. <laughs> you always have to go into the post-game shows with your hat and your raincoat and a towel. That's uh, things you have to have. And people forget that champagne burns your eyes. Another picture in the Doggett Gallery. This is it, the most trouble-free car in its class sold in the United States today, the Nissan Sentra. That's right. In the latest J.D. Power new car survey, Nissan Sentra was named the economy car with the least problems, the fewest headaches. In other words, the most quality. So, if quality and dependability is how you judge a car, the only choice you have to make is which Nissan Sentra you want. Special incentives to dealers from Nissan could help you save big at your Nissan dealer now, but hurry, time's limited. She was a redhead about five foot six inches tall, and all of a sudden this thing starts spinning, and it's going round and round. And so that makes me safe, because with my wife, I'll never be that way. You still have your career, and you're frustrated. I mean, that, that's what you want. Of course, that's just my opinion. So money's no object. Yeah. Money's no object. What are we going to do with our lives? Well, no. basketball. Yeah. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. If you're not wearing dockers, you're just wearing pants. And I'm still paying the loans. You got all the money in the world. I'd like to at least be your pool man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what drives me nuts about L.A. radio stations? I can't listen to any of them. Check it out. Oh, I'm supposed to make a choice here? Finally, there's a station that plays all classic rock all the time. Stones, Steely Dan, Beatles. KLSX. We brought classic rock back to Southern California. 97.1. KLSX. Classic rock for Southern California. In the top of the eighth inning, Sean Abner going to the warning track to handle the long fly ball. We'll take another look. Shipley hit the ball hard. And Abner, who's a fine young outfielder, on the dead run, making the catch. So one away. John Abner. Shipley's going to have a nice winter. He's going to take his new, brand new baby and take it, the uh, baby and wife to Australia. Mm. Going to leave uh, a little before Christmas Day, a couple of months, and his, his parents are going to get to see their grandbaby. How about being a grandparent and have your grandchild live in Australia? Yeah, be, be so far apart. That's really tough. Hard ground ball to shortstop. Salazar kicks it, tries to pick it up, and drops it. So Mike Sharperson is aboard on the error, and Sharperson is one for four. Ball hit right at him. It was just—it was just too easy. It hit him on the heel of the glove, and then he reached, and it wasn't there. And time to forget it. So Salazar draws an error, and with one out, Chris Gwynn against Mark Davis, who of course came here in the deal with the Giants that sent Craig Lefferts and Dave Brubecki to San Francisco. He came here along with Mark Graham. It's gonna be uh, Reggie, Reggie Williams. And uh, Reggie Williams will come up with a left hander instead of Gwynn. That's too bad. It would have been nice if uh, Chris Gwynn could have had an at bat here in San Diego, but not against a left hand. He went to school here. He was very popular as a college player and following the footsteps of his brother Tony. 
He was going to start the game on Friday night and came down with a bad bad ankle and couldn't play. Uh, little ground ball with Sharperson going, so that takes them out of the double play. They get the out at first. So with two down, Mike Sharperson has advanced to second base. And the batter do up would be Ralph Bryant, but Bryant Devereaux is going to give way to a right hand hitter, and that would be Mike Devereaux. I want to ask you something. During the season, we always play ball games that go two hours and 50 minutes to three hours and 40 minutes. We're at the end of the season here. The last three ball games here have gone about 205, 215. We're about due to get a 215 game here now. Yeah, that's <laughs> and all these players. You know, when you look in the record book, they talk about the, the quickest game ever played, quickest nine inning game, and it's something impossible. It's like 56 innings, yeah. but the key to it is the date. It was the last day of the season. Yeah. Under an hour. Yeah. Man, <laughs> can you imagine that? Now had to catch a bus. Now let's see what Mike Devereaux does. Another glimpse. He's a kid, I think, in the Dodgers scouting department. They felt that he was the number one prospect. He's a great athlete. He really is. Now he might still be over his head. He might need another year or two. That remains to be seen. But he is a kid who had so much ability that he really made the jump from San Antonio. He stopped off in Albuquerque for the so-called cup of coffee and then moved on right up to the big league. This month might do him a world of good, though. Oh, and now. Of course, it's a calculated risk with a player's confidence. You bring a kid up here for a month or so. If he does reasonably well, then he goes to spring training thinking, yeah, I can, I can play up there. But if he has a very tough month, then you might set him back a little bit. He's doing pretty well. Yeah. Mike Sharperson doing well, and he's at second base. Two out in the eighth inning. Dodgers four, Padres two. The big game today. Detroit defeated Toronto one to nothing to win the American League East. Well, let's see. They won in 84, didn't they? They sure they, did. They beat the Padres in the World Series. And the Padres and the Cubs, the winners in 84, are both in last place. So it shows you what kind of a roller coaster life it is in the big leagues, not only for players, but for teams as well. Sharperson is left at the end of seven and a half. It's four to two Dodgers. And here is a rather poignant picture. Big D. You know what it calls me? The black cat. The black cat. Well, there, there's <laughs> Airedale, <Black> <laughs> Airedale, and the black cat on Don Drysdale Drive in Bureau. And of course, Don will set sail with his career with the Dodgers in 1988. Weekend, days off. If you thought about going, think about now. Because now, TWA's low fares make the Big Apple a temptation. Or explore the best of Boston, another great buy. Tour the nation's capital. Or feel free to see Philadelphia, birthplace of the Constitution. TWA has low fares to almost anywhere you thought about going. Today's TWA. Find out how good we really are. Friends, you can now be placed on the season ticket waiting list to be part of the action for all 81 games at Dodger Stadium in 1988. Exciting Dodger baseball, an extensive promotional lineup, and great family entertainment will be highlighted throughout the season, beginning with opening day against the San Francisco Giants, April the 4th. To get your name on the 1988 season ticket waiting list, send your name, address, and telephone number to Season Tickets, Dodger Stadium, LA 90012. Yeah, it's a freeze. Bottom of the eighth inning, Reggie Williams, who batted for Chris Gwynn, is now out there in left field. And it's four to two Dodgers. Four runs, seven hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Two runs, six hits, and one error for the Padres. And Mike Devereaux, who batted for Ralph Bryant, is in right field. Well, we're coming down to the wire, the final game of the 1987 season. He's not here. He just went to the restroom for a minute. I uh, just wanted to say, Jerry's the best. We're sure going to miss him. 
and he'll be back here and then we won't do it. One ball and no strikes to count. Byers finishing up in left field for Carmelo Martinez. One and one. Four two Dodgers bottom of the eighth. Tim Cruz trying to finish him off. There's a drive hooking foul down the line and out of play. One and two the count to Randall Byers. Tim Cruz trying to finish up for Sean Hillegas. Hillegas went six innings allowed just two runs and five hits. And Tim now trying to nail it down. Foul back. You know what I like about these games? Your scorebook looks like you're in spring training. And you know, it's a reminder, you know, when you get down to the end and you see all of the personnel coming in, the kids replacing the veterans, that the veterans have to think about that. That comes spring training, it's another fight for another job. One and two, the count to Randall Byers. Dodgers scored three in the first, one in the fifth. Padres scored a run in the second and a run in the sixth. There's been a home run by Randy Reddy and Steve Sachs of the Dodgers. Might get to see Alejandro Pena in the ninth inning here. He's getting tuned up down in right field. And Cruz is doing okay. There's Alejandro down there. Oh, what a change in him. Remarkable, and of course, he'd be the first to admit that he was worried. He thought it was all over. Yes. Well, there was another guy that went to Dr. Job that thought his career was over, and he's still pitching. Tommy, Tommy John. John. How about that? Remarkable. Yep. Foul back to the screen by Mark Parent, the big catcher. 0 for 1. Parent struck out in the sixth inning. Of course, when you talk catching in San Diego, there's only one name, Benito Santiago. And Santiago, who had a 34-game hitting streak snapped last night, came right back today with a double and a single when he singled they took him out for a runner and he received the standing ovation that was one of the highlights of today's game. Oh and two the count to Mark Parent. Ball one. That's what's so nice about baseball whether you have a seller team or a championship team there's always something to cheer about the San Diego fans have had a tough year but they've had Gwynn and they've had Santiago and some others Dodger fans have had their people to cheer about too so it's just really great. The battle cry for almost every team except the winners summed up in four words. Wait till next year. Two down and Randy Reddy the batter. Single walked and homered. So he's trying to finish up in fine style with a perfect day. Bottom of the eighth. Dodgers four. Padres two. Gary you'll be uh, going downstairs shortly. Right. Huh? Going down and uh, we're going to have a nice little uh, production on the post game show. We'll all be together and talk to some of the players. Ross and I'll go on down. You join us in a little bit, huh? Okay, so just to tell you folks to stay with us when the game is over because we'll have a chance to visit with a lot of the players. You'll have a chance to see them and we'll kind of put a ribbon on 1987. So hope you'll be with us. Ball two, two and one. I want to see what the next picture is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Before you go, you got to see it. All right. Little roller foul outside of third. Our thanks, of course, to Jody, who helped us and made those pictures accessible so that we could have them, so that we could honor you in this small gesture of affection. I'm going to have to speak to her because the other night she was the guest on the post game show, mm -hmm. and now she's conspiring with, That's right. with pictures and things Same. like that. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Fly ball down the right field line. It's peeling foul and will drop untouched. Pena had to get out of the way, let Devereaux have a shot at it, so it's still two and two. I thought they said women can't keep secrets. Well, she out. did. She, she, uh, I she kept find it out about this. Yeah. I thought those were familiar, but I just wasn't sure. <laughs> There's some great ones. Two and two. Ball three. And that's fouled away off to the right out of play. So it's still three balls and two strikes. Two down on the eighth inning. Tim Cruz trying to protect this one for Sean Hilligas. You know, Cruz. Mark and Tony and Bill and all the guys have done a real good job. It really, really has been great to work with these kind of people. 
High drive into deep left center field. That's off the wall. Reggie Williams playing it by that time. Randy Reddy has a double. And so he is so close to the hat trick. He had a walk, a single, a double, and a home run. You know, I would almost give him my vote as the outstanding utility player of the year, except he's become almost a regular player here with the Padres. He's had an outstanding year, Randy Reddy. Here's another look at Reddy's swing. He got a lot of it. And Reggie Williams trying to run it down, but it was uncatchable. He had to just go to the fence to play it. So with two down, Reddy doubles, and Luis Salazar is the batter. Four to two Dodgers, two out in the eighth inning. 4-1. Salazar single flied out and grounded out. Big chopper in the left field. Base hit. So they will wave ready home. Williams throws over second base. And that's going to go down past first and allow the time run to get into scoring position. So Reggie Williams throwing one away. And the Padres now have their first look at the game. I have a feeling we're going to have an overtime game here. You know, we don't want to cut so soon. It's only a little after three. <laughs> Last game. Let's stay around a while. A couple of defensive shortcomings. One, that bad throw. Mike Sharperson never had a chance to catch it. The other was Sacks. Dodging out from under a pop fly that should have been caught. And we're seeing now if the Padres cash this in or not. It's four to three in favor of the Dodgers, but the defense has done some destructive work. One ball and one strike. That's another problem for a player like Reggie Williams to come in late in the game. Keith Comstock throwing in the pen. One and one to count. To Joey Cora, who is 0 for 3. Reggie is one of the brightest players around, too, and he made the right play, but I don't know why he just unloaded that throw. Two balls, one strike. High pop foul or third. Anderson coming over in the corner. Got it. Well, that gets Reggie Williams off the hook for the moment. It is four to three in favor of the Dodgers. And here's a picture of Jerome with his weapon. <laughs> ah, golfers beware. Oh, We're going to turn him loose. <laughs> Look out now. In 1973, a small bar served the first light beer. The response was unanimous. Tastes great. Here was a beer with its own special brewing process. Less filling. It's brewed to be light with only the finest quality ingredients. Tastes great. It's less filling. Tastes Today great. there are lots of lights around, but none are brewed like Miller Light, and none can match the taste. Tastes great. Less filling. Tastes great. For great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Light. Oh, well, uh, let's see. When trouble finds you, turn to a Unical 76 ProTec technician. Only ProTec technicians are trained and tested every two years. So, where'd you learn about cylinders? Caltech, class of 82. You? ProTec, class of 82, 84, 86. When trouble finds you, turn to a friend. There's a special sense of family love. Weeknights on Fox 11. Jennifer, your brother is a jerk. I know that. Oh, yeah? A sense of family support. She needs me right now. I'll take that. A sense of family happiness. Don't I look happy? You look shocked. I'm shocked and happy. I'm shappy. A sense of family ties. We're on television here. Look for family ties five days a week. It's all on videotape, Alex. See it for yourself. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 11. As we go to the ninth inning here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, the Dodgers leading the Padres four to three, and it is now a simulcast as the play-by-play -play will be heard at the same time on KABC in the Dodger Radio Network and Channel 11. Ground ball to the hole, it's short. Salazar makes the play too late as Gonzalez, who runs faster than anybody else in the Dodger uniform, just glides to the bag for an infield single. 
So Jose Gonzalez, good play by Salazar to backhand set and make the long throw, but Gonzalez almost effortlessly across the bag for the infield single. And that'll bring up Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher finishing up at first base for the Dodgers today. This will be his first at bat after having grounded out in the seventh inning. Now he has somebody aboard. But the runner going, he takes low, and the throw is going to be late. So Jose Gonzalez has shown a couple of things today. Number one, he made a great throw early in the game. He's handled everything hit in the air to him. And you see his speed getting the infield single and now a stolen base. Those are just some of the tools that Gonzalez brings to the dance. And one reason why the Dodgers are so patient with him because he is still relatively a baby. Mickey Hatcher swings at a breaking ball and doesn't get it, and they count one ball and one strike. We're in the ninth inning. Dodgers four, Padres three. Dodgers on two poor defensive plays, and one of them allowing a run to score. Hatcher, after a fastball, doesn't get it, and they count one and two. The Dodgers would like, of course, to get Gonzalez home to lighten the load on Tim Cruz or Alejandro Pena, and from the looks of things, Pena might be pitching the ninth inning. He's still throwing in the bullpen, getting ready. One and two to Mickey Hatcher. A look back at Gonzalez, and a breaking ball is pulled to third. Randy Reddy is up with it to throw out of Hatcher, and he keeps Gonzalez on the bag, one away. Friends, this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated who also employ the announcers. It's intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, description, or other use of the game without the express written permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated is prohibited. John Shelby is now going to come up and hit. So Shelby the batter. Dodgers trying to get Gonzalez home. What a fine year Shelby has had. 21 home runs, 69 RBI. And he takes high, ball one, one and oh. Dodgers got three in the first. The Padres got one in the second. Dodgers came back with one in the fifth. And the Padres have scored in the sixth and eighth to get close. Shelby, after a pitch, tried to golf it, didn't get it, and the count one and one. John Shelby against Mark Davis. Davis, who came to San Diego in the deal with the Giants that sent Dave Drobecki and Craig Lefferts up north. One ball and one strike. And the pitch high and outside, ball two, two and one. We repeat, this ninth inning is a telecast. Benefit of those watching television. We certainly hope you'll stay with us for the postgame show. It'll be a little different postgame show. The scores don't really mean anything except for that one score. The fact the Tigers beat Toronto one to nothing to clinch the American League East on a home run by Larry Herndon. What we'll try to do, among other things, is meet some of the players. And just between you and me, we're hoping to have a, a little fun and say so long to Jerry Doggett. So stay with us. Three and two the count to John Shelby. Orlando Mercado going all the way behind the plate is out on deck. Mark Davis comes back to his hitter with Gonzalez going to third and he has stolen it as Shelby strikes out. So Jose Gonzalez steals second and steals third. But Shelby strikes out and the Dodgers now have the insurance run 90 feet away as Orlando Mercado is the batter. Orlando Mercado. Mercado going all the way behind the plate struck out doubled and singled. Show you the fortunes and how quickly they change for teams. Just three years ago the Cubs and San Diego were division champions and then San Diego won and went on to play Detroit in the World Series. This year the Cubs are last in the East San Diego last in the West as you see Phil Garner come out of the Dodger dugout and the breaking ball to Mercado a strike and the count one and one. So too for Orlando Mercado as he tries to pick up Jose Gonzalez from third. He was in the opening day lineup. He was the catcher for the Detroit Tigers. 
Here's a ground ball hit up the middle base hit. So Mercado comes up with his third hit scoring Gonzalez with the big insurance run and the Dodgers lead five to three. So Mercado finishing up on a high note as is Gonzalez who had the infield single stole second and third and Mercado comes up with his third hit two singles and a double. So Mercado will make the Dodgers think about him a little more and Tommy Lasorda is sitting in the corner of the dugout nodding as it say yes nice going maybe you are going to be my backup catcher maybe you'll give Alex Trevino a run for his money and Phil Garner will now hit for Tim Cruz which means we'll see Pena in the bottom of the ninth inning Garner grounds one hard to third but ready who's been ready all day turns it into a force play the Dodgers settle for one run and this gives us one moment now to salute two of the loveliest people I've ever known. God's been good to them and they've been good to each other. They've been married 47 years. Jody and Jerry Doggett. Much love. When you're working a tough day, you want a tough Nissan hard body regular bed working with you. Because of all leading standard compact trucks, here's the most power, most torque, and biggest cargo box, plus steel-belted radials and a five-speed stick. All this on Nissan's lowest sticker price truck. We make it feel like driving, and the name is Nissan. Shopping for meats that make the meal? Here's another appetizing idea from Farmer John, an idea that has been on Southland tables for over three generations. Farmer John, made fresh in Southern California and delivered daily to your favorite store. Farmer John, a source for quality, taste, and value. Made Farmer John's unhurried old-time Western way to give it a wonderful, rich Western flavor. Always easternmost in quality, westernmost in flavor. Friends, make your meal today with Farmer John. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, the Dodgers leading the Padres 5-3. to three. Phil Garner, who batted for Anderson, stays in the game at third base. Alejandro Pena will pick up and do the pitching, and Pena will be getting ready to pitch to San Diego, enjoying a two-run lead. Marvell Wynn, swinging a bat, would appear to be the first man to come out in the ninth inning. So Alejandro Pena loosening up. You know, it's taken a lot of work to present telecast all year long, and it took a little extra work to do what the fellas did today with that nice touch, the dogged gallery. And I know you appreciate it. I loved it. And I'd like to take a moment or two to salute some of the fellas who worked so hard all year long and never have a chance to get out into the spotlight and take a bow. So first of all, our heartfelt thanks to our producer and director, Mark Wolfson has done an absolutely admirable job and an innovative and imaginative job and to Mark Wolfson our heartiest congratulations for a great year. To our co-producer Bill Finley besides doing the game it is Bill Finley who has to work under the gun and I mean under the gun to try and put together highlights of packages that contribute so much to the post game show so to William heartfelt thanks to you as well. To Mark Rita who celebrated this year by doing the only wise thing a young man can do. He got married. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mark Rita, our heartiest congratulations. He's our associate producer who does all the, the video font, the, the numbers and names that you see on the screen. Fellas, just great. And we still have two more men we'd like to honor, but right now, Marvell win at the plate against Alejandro Pena. Ball one, one and all. Oh. The final game of the long, hot summer. And it has come down to this bottom of the ninth with the Dodgers leading 5-3. There's a strike to Marvell Wynn. So Wynn will be followed by Abner and Jefferson. And you can see Marvell's numbers falling off a little bit in the power department. He takes inside and just did get out of the way of it. Two balls and one strike to count to Marvell Wynn as Alejandro Pena tries to close up shop. We'd also like to take thanks to Bob Wall and to Jack Nemo to Dave Vanderwalker our producer to Sandy Golasso to all the people at KBC 
and KTTV Channel 11 for all the cooperation and, and good feeling because it is a long year. And we are deeply appreciative of how kind they've been to us. Two and two the count. Alejandro Pena trying to finish off the Padres. Pena with 10 saves. And he really came in a hurry as a relief pitcher. He doesn't have good numbers because he had all those starts trying to come back and he was two and seven. Waiting his turn on deck. Sean Abner. So Marvell win first up against Pena strikes out one down two other gentlemen who worked so hard never receive any public acknowledgement and certainly our right hand here in the booth the fellow who he doesn't give you 100 percent he's way beyond George Allen's 110 percent Tony Jacobucci our associate director and without whom I don't know what we do way to go Tone and Dick Jacobson our engineering supervisor somehow some way whenever trouble flares and anytime you're on the road televising trouble can flare Dick is there to put out the fire so those are the fellows Mark Wolfson Bill Finley Mark Rita Tony Yakabuchi Dick Jacobson to whom we are so ever grateful for their good nature and for getting the job done oh and to the count to Sean Abner one out in the ninth inning five three Dodgers as they try to get the job done the Dodgers should they win today will have equaled their wins of last year that's not a great accomplishment they're not very thrilled about it they wanted to improve on last year but it was a sour season one and two the count Abner followed by Jefferson and I guess really while we still have the luxury of time little roll of the third tough play Garner bare hands throws too late oh what a great effort but Abner with good running speed turns it into a base hit after a fine play by Phil Garner. He couldn't afford to glove it. He had to just barehanded on the dead run and got a little something on the throw but Abner just runs too well. Excellent play by Garner. Abner just did beat it by a stride. So an infield single and Stanley Jefferson the batter. While we do have the time we really want to thank you folks been with us all year those who came to Dodger Stadium over two million eight paid to see the Dodgers this year but more than that over all the years since they've been in Los Angeles and the Dodgers would certainly like me to express their thanks for your attendance and from the Dodgers you get the promise if effort will get the job done you'll get the effort Dan Jefferson going all the way. He's 0 for 3 with a walk and a stolen base. Abner at first with one out. 5 3 Dodgers in the ninth. 0 and 2. In case you missed it, Detroit beat Toronto 1 to nothing in a pitching duel between Frank Tanana and Jimmy Key. It was decided in the second inning. A home run by Larry Herndon. And the Tigers are the champions of the American League East. They'll be playing the Minnesota Twins. Fouled away. In the National League, it'll be the Cardinals and the Giants starting Tuesday night from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Dodgers five runs, nine hits, one error. Padres three runs, nine hits, and one error. to the count Pena comes back with a pitch on the hands and it's hit inside out down the left field line foul into the San Diego bullpen Reggie Williams in pursuit but he never had a play bottom of the ninth inning of the last game of the season Stanley Jefferson the batter Rob Nelson left hand hitting first baseman on deck Abner at first and Hatcher not holding nice crowd on hand today and to be honest they are here not just for the game they had a sit and brave a hammering sun they've had a ball and then they'll be rewarded after the game with a concert by the Beach Boys and it is a good day for the beach as Jefferson strikes out so Pena has two strikeouts and an infield single and Rob Nelson 
And I would think one of the biggest lifts that the Dodgers have gotten the last couple of weeks has been the work of Alejandro Pena. He has been marvelous. So Pena trying to nail it down. Pena has picked up a save in each of his last seven outings. He'd get another save today. The last time in Houston, he went three innings, allowed two hits and no run. He's just been brilliant. He's had eight saves in his last nine appearances. And this will really get to He's allowed one earned run in his last 23 innings. That's over 14 appearances. So Pena working now on Rob Nelson who swings and doesn't get the first one to count 0 and 1. Pedro Guerrero who came out of uniform early today is in the dugout but he is out of uniform now. He's in his off season mufti. 0 and 1 to count to Rob Nelson and Pena comes right back and it's popped foul off to the left out of play and the count 0 and 2. We would ask you, if you possibly can, to stay with us for the postgame show. We'll have a chance to visit with many members of the team down in the dugout, and I think it'll be kind of nice. And also, it will give all of us, along with the team, a chance to say so long to Jerry. So, at least so long professionally. So I hope you'll stay with us. 0 and 2 the count, and Pena deals outside, ball one. <laughs> One and two the count. And Pena trying to finish it off. Dodgers leading five to three in the ninth inning. Alejandro deals and it is on the corner. Strike three call. So Pena finishes up by striking out the side. The Dodgers win it five to three. Five runs, nine hits, one error for the Dodgers. Three runs, nine hits, one error for the Padres. Sean Hillegas gets the win. He is four and three. He is one and oh against the Padres, one and oh lifetime. Alejandro Pena picks up his 11th save as those on television will go through Jerry's scrapbook and see pictures out of the past. For the Padres, three runs, nine hits, and one error. The losing pitcher would be the starter, Ed Whitson, who gave up three runs in two innings. Then it was Booker, Leeper, and Davis. So the Dodgers wind up winning 11 out of 18 from San Diego, and they wind up winning their 73rd game. That's as many as they won last year. So once again, the final score of the ball game: the Dodgers five, the Padres three. For Jerry Doggin and Ross Porter, this is Ben Scully inviting you to stay tuned for the postgame show coming right up. Dodger baseball has been brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to see all the hot new Nissan cars and trucks at your Nissan dealer now. One test drive and you'll know why Nissan makes you feel like driving. By Miller Lite, the great taste is only one light beer. By your local Coca-Cola bottler. When Coca-Cola is a part of your life, you can't beat the feeling. By Unical 76, Protect Dealers. Guaranteed auto service. That's the spirit of 76. By Farmer John. For the best of bacon, ham, sausage, hot dogs, luncheon meats, fresh pork, and more, Farmer John. When it comes to autofocus cameras, some give you part of the action, but Canon EOS gives you all of the action. When it's so dark that some can't focus, EOS doesn't miss a trick. And Canon EOS has computers and motors and every lens for fast focus. So great shots are easy and so creative, the competition is out of the picture. EOS, more than autofocus, easier than ever. Buy EOS today with no money down, low monthly payments at participating Canon dealers. At Intercontinental, three out of four of our guests are so pleased they return again and again. New York for flawless service. Intercontinental again and again. San Francisco for a legendary hotel. Intercontinental again and again. Miami for glittering conferences. Intercontinental again and again. Washington for the residence of presidents. Intercontinental again and again. For 100 hotels around the world, call 1-800-33-AGAIN. 
Let's stop your policy, dig up your bill. Leave it to the good hands, people. Do it right now or you know you never will. Come into Allstate and compare our low homeowner's rates. You might just save some money. Check through your files, look how you low. Get down to Allstate, you might save some dough. Leave it to the good hands, people. member of the Sears Financial Network. Ludwig von Beethoven had absolutely no trouble writing nine great symphonies, but when it came to choosing the right audio components... Ah! I go to Circuit City! At Circuit City, the vast selection of brand name stereo equipment and expert advice will make you feel smart every time. With our unique mix and match component wall and special listening rooms, choosing the right system is never a problem. Exactly as I wrote it. Ah. Circuit City. The intelligent choice. There's no escaping. Bugs. Alligators. Night creatures. Rattlers. Spiders. It's Creature Week on Fox, beginning Monday at 8 with Bug, only on Fox 11. Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, the scene of today's action as the Dodgers beat the Padres 5-3. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our final post-game show of the year, a show that should be a little different, and, of course, a show that is also a tribute to Jerry Dogg at his last broadcast on a Dodger game. Finished up on a high note, the Dodgers beat the Padres 5-3. to three. They wind up winning 73 games in an otherwise very disappointing season. Alejandro Peña finished up by striking out the side. That, indeed, was a positive note. We'll be going to meet Tommy Lasorda, most of the Dodgers, and with Ross and Jerry, all that will be coming up right after this. Over a half a century ago, Nelda Clinton helped co-found Clifton's Cafeterias, and a legend in fine dining began. Today, Mrs. Clinton still takes a lively interest in good food, while her son Don and daughter Jean continue family management and quality control. An appetizing variety tested with the Clintons' loving care. No wonder each generation loves Clifton's a little more. Now seven locations where food prepared fresh daily adds to the taste of delicious decisions at Clifton's. In California, all kinds of people in all kinds of jobs share the same kind of quality dental coverage. Delta Dental, with vigilant cost controls to keep dental coverage affordable. More California companies choose Delta Dental than any other group dental plan. California's largest, Delta Dental. We have a plan to keep you smiling. Well, Tommy, we began the day talking to you about the prospects for next year, and the ball club played well again today. You got a good win. You got three hits out of a rookie catcher, so things are really looking up here. Well, it's a good day to close the season with a win. That'll carry us over in the start of next year. I'm very, very proud of the guys. They didn't finish where we wanted to, but as I told them before the game, no one can ever accuse them of lack of effort, determination, and desire. They gave us all that they had. We were talking uh, during the game that every game is important to a ball club no matter where they are in the standings or what's going on. They want to get out there and win that ball game. Whatever it is, pride or the act of, fact that they're professionals and they want to give the fans everything they paid for. You're absolutely right. When these fans pay their money to come into the ballpark, our players want to give them the best performance they can give them. And they, they gave it everything they had. And I told the coaches how proud I was of them. They worked hard. The trainers and those who were on the disabled list and were not able to perform, I felt real bad for them. Well, Jerry, the last uh, couple of weeks we saw Tommy use a lot of youngsters in the lineup, and Tommy, I guess that experience you get, even if your club is not an dependent race, adds up in later years. Is that what you found, too? Yes, we want to see them under major league conditions, and we did. We saw Devereaux, we saw Jose Gonzalez, we saw Club Bryant, we saw a lot of young men playing under major league conditions, and that gives us a better idea of what they're capable of doing. And now we're going to have a good idea on him in the spring. And also we saw Alejandro Pena again. i tell you one thing, he's been hiding under a basket someplace. If he'd have been here all year, this might have been a very different year. Well, you know how important a good relief pitcher is. And as I told our coaches, if he had been throwing the ball like that the entire year, it would have made a big difference in our standing. He threw the ball as hard today as I've ever seen him. And we're hoping now that he will continue with that attitude of being a relief pitcher 
This is what we need real bad on this ball club for 88. Even more than another start. Absolutely. We got to have a guy come out of the bullpen and do the job like he's done for the last three weeks. Tommy, one of the encouraging things about the last six weeks of the season was the fact that the Dodgers played so much better defensively. That's right, and that's the name of the game. We hadn't been able to catch the ball throughout the year, but our defense has played a big part, and that's why we want so many games. I know one thing about this ball club. Uh, in years past, we've always had our guys that could pull the jokes and things like that. We had Jay Johnstone, Jerry Royce, and everything like that. But maybe the biggest deal the Dodgers made all year was when they got my guy Mickey Hatcher back there. But Mickey's back in the crowd. Look at this guy, will you? Well, Mickey's a credit to the ball club. Mickey, Mickey yes. loves it, yeah. Mickey loves to play. <laughs> Where's his mustache? You don't know what he sees when he's looking through those glasses. Oh. That's what you got to wonder about. Yeah. But at any rate, Mickey does a good job for us. Well, good. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, what about the rest of these guys? We'll turn them loose here. Back. Well, my coach is staff are oh, here. He's a friend. jolly good, good fellow. fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For nobody, nobody can deny. deny. For nobody can deny. For nobody can deny. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. And nobody can deny. We've just brought out a Dodge tape that reads, Congratulations, Jerry Doggett, for 32 years behind the Dodger microphone and surrounded by some of his friends, including the skipper. And Jerry, this is on radio and TV, and we're going to get more remarks from you. But uh, first of all, I think like everybody having a party, it is a surprise, right? It sure is. And I wonder... Can I take this in and let all the guys eat some of that oh, cake? Absolutely. We'll be right back with more festivities on the post-game show right after this. That was about the extent of my day. Oh, yeah, what did the doctor say? No, it's not. Really? Really? Well. What? Well, you know, I must take some tests. You all right? Why? What for? He says it's nothing to worry about. It's to... Tom, you don't take tests unless there's something to worry about. Now listen, whatever it is, we can handle it. Sure. Everything's going to be all right. Calamari Landers, uh, great job. <laughs> Stay your red Ferrari. Look, that cashmere sport coat looks just like yours. Yeah, it does. But actually, your mind's from uh, Neiman Marcus. But didn't you pay a couple hundred dollars more at Neiman Marcus? Oh, yeah, but, you know, actually, you get what you... You know, where'd she go? Guess it's not my year. See in our clothiers, that's all it costs. In the heat at San Diego Stadium, flushed with victory since the Dodgers wound up on a happy note. And we hope this has been a happy note for you, Jerry. It really has, and it's a nice way to go out, have a win here. And, uh, gee, that cake is really something. You know, uh, I don't know, I'm going to take a picture of that cake. I don't think I'm going to cut it or even just going to keep it, put it, freeze it and keep it. Well, all the good fellows at uh, KTTV and KABC and the Dodger Radio Network, as well as all of your friends, they all wanted to make sure that there was a little something special about the day, and consequently that large cake. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, they, <laughs> this is quite a production. I, really, I don't know what to say. Well, let's talk about the year then instead. Ross, what about 1987? Admittedly, uh, a dismal season. Yes, it was, Vinny, because the Dodgers felt going in that they had the pitching to make them contenders during the year, but the ball club just didn't hit. They didn't get the relief pitching they thought they would get this year. The defense, of course, uh, faltered as well. So I think that... Uh, Although they were still in it, I think, going into late July or so, uh, it, it never really did materialize for this ball club. Jerry, as you look back, what are some of the highlights and lowlights of the year? Well, I think the highlight has been the last uh, two weeks or so when we've seen uh, the young players come in and play and Alejandro Pena really turning things around, giving the bullpen a big boost. And the low light, of course, as we mentioned before, was the fact that they had a losing streak uh, when they had a chance to make a move. I don't know whether they were going to wind up first or not, but they certainly had that long losing streak. That would be a low light. But I think a highlight is every time, and for me personally, any time I can sit down and watch them play, that's a highlight. And they played very well when you look at somebody like a Mike Sharperson. And what a way for Alejandro Pena 
to give the Dodgers an optimistic glimpse of 1988 by finishing up the last game of the season by striking out the side. We'll have a little bit more on the post-game show, which is a tribute to Jerry Doggett right after this. Let me tell you, the competition's tough. Stores like Bullock's, May Company, and the Broadway carry many of the same shoes that made standard shoes the fashion leader. That's why we've made our prices so low, they can't compete. These low heel leather pumps from Nordstrom and from standard shoes may look the same, but they're not. It's hard to believe that the ones from Nordstrom are actually priced 65% higher. You see, we're pretty tough competition, too. Standard shoes. The competition made us do it. When it comes to autofocus cameras, some give you part of the action, but Canon EOS gives you all of the action. When it's so dark that some can't focus, EOS doesn't miss a trick. And Canon EOS has computers and motors and every lens for fast focus. So great shots are easy and so creative, the competition is out of the picture. EOS, more than autofocus, easier than ever. Buy EOS today with no money down, low monthly payments at participating Canon dealers. You just want to take time to do just that. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the final Dodger home game of 1987, all of us with hearts full of love would like to salute Jody and Jerry Doggett. a once in a lifetime for you and your wife Jody 47 years married to go to home plate be welcomed by Tommy Lasorda all of your friends team members of the Dodgers and then of course the speech that you made at the very end having received some gifts having even been saluted by the former Dodgers who are now wearing giant uniforms so that had to be a night of all time for you well it was it was really outstanding and it's kind of a uh, I, I was really awed by standing at home plate and looking up and seeing all the fans in the stands because you don't realize what the Dodger Stadium is like until you're on the field looking up and seeing how, how big and how awesome and how beautiful it really is. I really thought it was great. Well, Ross, we're only saying goodbye to him professionally, but this is the last time that we'll be working together with him, and I know you have something to say. Yes, we do, Benny. We just love this man so much, and he's meant so much to both of us, you for 32 years in the booth and me for the last 11 this fellow really brought me along when I came into Major League Baseball broadcasting, taught me a lot of things. I'll never be able to thank him enough for that. And, of course, you go back to September 1956 in Brooklyn when he broke in with you a game of the Dodgers and the Giants. And as you mentioned the other night, his last home game was the Dodgers and the Giants. So we're not going to say goodbye. We're going to look forward to seeing you. We just want you to get your handicap down so that you can go out and play with Benny and uh, have a good game the next time you two get together. And more than anything else, Jerry, we will concentrate on the good times that we've had and not the fact that you're not going to be with us anymore. We've been very fortunate. God bless you. God bless you, my God man. Bless you. We'll have one sign off right after this. five to three best wishes much love to jerome doggett and 1987 has come to an end for ross porter this is vin scully for jerry saying so long till next year about El Pollo Loco's charbroiled chicken. But you ought to know that it's marinated and then charbroiled in an irresistible blend of fruit juices, herbs, and spices. Then served with fresh tomato salsa and tortillas. El Pollo Loco is health-consciously prepared, deliciously different. But please remember that this charbroiled chicken may be habit-forming. Taste for yourself, but don't say we didn't warn you. El Pollo Loco, the fast food habit worth having.
Now you can fly in the grand tradition. Introducing Grand Class to New York. Only one airline offers Grand Class from Los Angeles to New York at ordinary first class fares. MGM Grand Air. Everything else should be called second class. From Athens, Georgia, to Athens, Greece, one of the world's big watches is Pulsar. With designs that are the rage in Paris, France, and Paris, Texas. And a price that's as appealing in Glasgow, Kentucky, as it is in Glasgow, Scotland. Which just goes to show, from Venice, Italy, to Venice, California, to Venice, Florida, the world knows a great watch when it sees one. Pulsar. 